want to come on over to ABC Sports and see the third running of the Brickyard 400. We really appreciate you spending the time with us with the historic Indianapolis Motor Speedway to start a new tradition, the Brickyard 400. That first race saw young Jeff Gordon, who grew up near the track, take the win. This year, he's won six times and leads the season point standings. Seven-time Winston Cup champion Dale Earnhardt won last year's Brickyard. He's close behind Gordon in the points, but his status for today's race is uncertain because six days ago, he was involved in a frightening accident. NASCAR's biggest purse, over $4 million is on the line. NASCAR's largest crowd, over 300,000 is here today. A tradition is rapidly growing. The start of the Brickyard 400 is just minutes away. ABC's Wide World of Sports is live at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the third running of the Brickyard 400. Stock cars on the world's most famous speedway. Well, the skies are beautiful, the temperatures are climbing up into the mid-80s, and in just a few minutes down trackside, it's going to sizzle. Now, with the Winston Cup Championship this year already 16 races into the record, and after thousands of miles of racing, it's still a very close fight. Consider the history of this race here. Young, handsome, slick Jeff Gordon and the rough, tough Dale Earnhardt, the two winners of this race thus far. Well, they're in the middle of that championship fight and they're the center of focus here at the Brickyard 400. Jeff Gordon for the second year in the row has taken the pole. He is four miles an hour faster than he was last year. Part of that is due to the track surface here which has been resurfaced and that track surface may be a story yet here today. And then consider Dale Earnhardt. Just six days ago he was in a horrific accident at Talladega flipped end over end. He broke his collarbone. He broke his sternum. The next day he was climbing back into a race car. The plan here is for him to start the race so he can get the points. What about it, Jerry Punch? Well, incredibly, Paul, the, this intimidator has climbed aboard this car. Dale's incredible courage here, given the fact that you got the fractures, the broken collarbone and the sternum. How do you feel and how do you plan to play it? <laughs> I'll just play it by ear, really. I'm going to run as long as I can. Or either to the first caution. As soon as we get a caution, I'll get out of it. Uh, hope, hopefully, they, with no trouble, maybe there'll be a Jacques Debris caution. Maybe a little debris on the track or something, but if we can get a caution, it'd be, it'd be good for us. If, you know, I don't know how long I can stand this. You see Dale in the car. He has a patch here over the left collarbone that's broken. He has a stimulator inside to try to take some of the pain away. Incredible that he is actually able to get in the race car at all, Paul. And there are a lot of those that think he may be the winner before this day is over. Now, let's go to the two who will call the race for us today. They always join us for Winston Cup Racing. Here's Bob Jenkins and Benny Parsons. Thanks very much, Paul, and hi, everyone. Well, the importance of this race is measured in many ways. Each of the 300,000 or so fans gathered here today has a reason why he likes to come here. And by the same token, Benny, the drivers measure it different ways. Yeah, by testing. You know, NASCAR only allows these teams to test seven times per year. They use two tests for the Daytona 500. And the teams that are trying to win the championship, they'll save those last five tests until the latter part of the year to the tracks where they can go and decide the championship. Dale Earnhardt is going for number eight, eighth championship. No one has ever won more than seven. He came to Indianapolis and tested twice. That tells me how important this is. Well, Benny Parsons retired from competition back in 1988. The first Brickyard 400 was in 94. Are you sorry you quit, and are you sorry you never had the chance to race here? Yeah, I mean, look at all the people. I mean, this place is unbelievable. You go down the front straight away, 100,000 people on the right and 50,000 people on the left. I never got to experience that. There was almost an exact replica of this racetrack out in Ontario, California. It is no longer exists, and you had great success there. Won two times there. Won two times, and it probably paid... Uh, probably thirty thousand dollars to win today last pays fifty thousand dollars so paul we can only dream of what may have been <laughs> we look ahead to one very terrific run here today this track always produces some spectacular results take a look at that is that one gigantic crowd the largest ever in nascar history and they're going to watch them race for a purse over 4.7 million dollars it's a very 
very serious run indeed for everybody in Winston Cup racing. When we come back, we will be ready for the start of the engines and, in fact, the start of the race. Yeah, testing one, two, three, four. Testing one, two, three, four. Got it. Bob and Benny are on headsets, ready to go. <laughs> Crank them up. Let's go. Yeah, I bet you are. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know. Good job, Bob. Who's singing? Steve Warner again? Joining us this year for the coverage in the top of the suites over turn two there is 85 Indy 500 winner Danny Sullivan. Well, turn two is so important because it leads onto that bat straightaway. But two added twists. They've been putting concrete and cement powder down all week with water trying to settle the track down because it's rippling. The other thing is they've taken out the rumple strips. They've got that grass on the inside. Those NASCARs are running through that grass, pulling it up getting it into the radiator on a day like today that's so hot that's going to be a problem Paul we'll certainly keep track of that as Danny watches from high over turn two over on the front stretch at Indianapolis the 40 cars are in position position behind the pace car just ahead of the yard of bricks the famous yard of bricks at Indianapolis now for those famous words the chairman aboard emeritus of the Speedway Mary Fendrick Holman Well, race fans, we are ready now for the start of the third Brickyard 400. And it is an honor to present President Emeritus of the board of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and the matriarch of the Hallman George family, Mrs. Mary Fendrick Hallman. the front stretch as the crews head back to the 
pit boxes. Let's go to Jack Aroot. And, Paul, this guy has a lot on the line today. A chance at the Winston Cup defending Winston Cup champion in Jeff Gordon and then Kenny Schrader. Three cars. What about it, Rick Hendrick? Well, you know, we've got them all up front, and uh, the, the points look good. we got to finish. It's going to be a tough race, but we're committed to getting that Budweiser car in victory lane with Kenny Schrader, too. So we're all we're, It's going to be a great day, I hope. That was the car, Gary Gerald, that he wished the well, the last, to Kenny Schrader. Gary? Anxious owners all up and down this road. Joe Gibbs into the Football Hall of Fame last week. Congratulations, Coach. But right now, I know racing's on your mind. That's your right. driver, Bobby Labonte, starts 23rd. How do you think he's going to be able to get up and challenge? Well, we think we got a good car. It's just a matter of us trying to work away to the front, and hopefully nothing up there happens. You're going to have to dodge it, just like last week. Lord gave us a great day, and I think we... Hopefully, it's going to be any better day. I got goosebumps right now when he says start those cars. Don't we all? Yeah. Have a great day. Thank you, guys. Paul? So now the cars are all set and ready to go as we're waiting for them to pull out. There is Jeff Gordon's car, and we'll take a look at the starting field. On the pole, of course, is Jeff Gordon, the winner of the first Brickyard 400. Mark Martin's alongside, looking for his first win of 96. Lake Speed, who hasn't won since 88, is in the second row with Kenny Schrader, the teammate to the pole sitter alongside. In row three, it's Bobby Hillen. He'll have to move to the rear of the field in his backup car after a wreck yesterday. And Joe Nemechek. In row four, it's Bill Elliott and Rick Mass, the pole sitter for the first Brickyard 400. Row five, Terry Labonte and Greg Sachs. In row six, Sterling Marlin and Dale Earnhardt. The seventh row, Kyle Petty and Johnny Benson, one of only two drivers making his first start at the Brickyard. The eighth row is Ernie Irvin and Hunt Strickland. In the ninth row, Rusty Wallace, who finished second here last year, and Wally Dollenbach, Jr. The tenth row, Jeremy Mayfield, as the polls begin to pull away, and Jimmy Spencer. In the eleventh row, Ted Musgrave and Brett Bodine, who finished second in this race two years ago. In row 12, Bobby Labonte and Dale Jarrett. The thirteenth row, Dick Trickle and Gary Bradbury. In row 14, John Andretti and Jeff Burton. Fifteen is Jeff Bodine and Michael Waltrip. The 16th is Kenny Wallace and Ward Burton. In the 17th row, Daryl Waltrip and Robert Presley. Row 18, Ricky Rudd and Derek Cope. The 19th row, Bobby Hamilton and Morgan Shepard. And the provisional starters are Ricky Craven and Dave Marcus. Now let's go to Jerry Punch. While reigning super truck champion for NASCAR, Mike Skinner has the unenviable task of trying to fill Earnhardt's seat when he climbs out of the car. If he climbs out of the car, Mike, first of all, do you think he'll get out? Oh, yeah, he'll be out in just a little bit. We're going to try to make it to the first caution, but, uh, you know, his shoulder hurts quite a bit, and there's no sense in him staying in that car and hurting himself any worse. He gets out, he'll have a little more time to mend. What's your role here today? Do you try to collect points for the team toward that championship, or can you go out and try to win the race? Well, the first three quarters of the race, we need to collect points. We need to be there at the end, whether we're last place or, you know, 20th or whatever. We're going to go out and try to ride, run consistent laps, and keep the car out of trouble. If the car's capable of winning toward the end of the race, we're going to run it hard as we can. We're just going to have to cross that bridge when we come to it. Mike Skinner, super sub, and what a man to sub for Paul, a seven-time Winston Cup champion. And there we get a view of Dale Earnhardt back in the field as they work down the back stretch on the parade lap. Then they'll begin the pace lap. We have 160 laps of hard-fought racing ahead of us. Dale Earnhardt holds the race record from last year. We expect the pit stops to come somewhere between, uh, oh, the 30th, 35th lap in there. And uh, we've already mentioned $4,700,000 plus. That's what they're racing for. Temperature right now is a little warm. It's going to get warmer. And we have uh, untypical Indiana humidity. Normally, it's much higher than that. It's expected to be sunny throughout the afternoon. And the current points fight in the Winston Cup championship right now is, as we said, very tight up on the top with Jeff Gordon leading the fight, followed by Terry Labonte, Dale Earnhardt, Dale Jarrett, Sterling Marlin. Those are the top of the points fight. Then comes Ricky Rudd, Rusty Wallace, Ken Schrader, Mark Martin, and Ernie Irvin. So now they are ready to start the pace lap. It's just two and a half miles to the start of the Brickyard 400. So let's send it up to the tower. Bob Jenkins and Benny Parsons. 
the great poet James Whitcomb Riley, who grew up near Greenfield, Indiana, used to write about days like this when he spent summers in Indiana by the old fishing hole. Well, we're at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway at the moment, and glad we are here because the Brickyard 400 is but a lap from the green flag, and we have some cars that are topping off already, Benny. Because they have run one lap. They, they sat there and warmed the cars up. They have run one lap. They stopped to put that last drop of fuel in. These cars were starting at the end of the race, so one lap might make a huge difference. The cars move through turn number one onto the south short chute, head toward Danny Sullivan in turn number two. Well, everything looks good over here. They're just warming up their tires. These guys have got to be anxious, and they've got to wonder what those little concrete cement patches are going to do to them on that first lap. You can see them clearly right now. The cars on the left lane are running through it, and, of course, we've also heard Danny talk about the grass that they have been running through, and that may cause problems of overheating later in the afternoon, and besides that, they're throwing the grass up onto the track, which may make it just a little bit slick. On the parade lap, you saw the two pace cars out there, and you saw a gap in the cars. The reason that NASCAR does that is to set these cars at pit road speed. There is a speed limit on pit road. It's, today, it's 55 miles per hour. Those pace cars, those two cars run 55, and that way the driver is able to set their tachometer in a gear, like in second gear at 3,500 RPMs. That's what they'll have to run down the front stretch. They have no speedometers in the cars. They have to use the tacks. The question remains, how long can Dale Earnhardt stay in the car? He was very emotional this morning. He wants so badly to stay in that car and to possibly drive it to victory again. But he knows that the injuries that he suffered last Sunday in Talladega will just not permit it. So Mike Skinner is standing by. 40 cars come out of the short chute or onto the short chute and will begin to quicken the pace as the Brickyard 400 is just a few moments away from the start. Jeff Gordon has been on the pole with a new track record. It's the sixth time this season that the pole speed has been a new record, and Gordon has been responsible for three of those. The Camaro pace car leads him down. If he turns left, this race will be underway. Bobby Hillen and Bobby Hamilton join the back of the field because of their crashes yesterday during practice. The starter looks them over. We are moments away from the green flag. And there it is. The third Brickyard 400 is underway from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And take Earnhardt long and down to the inside. Two by two through corner number one. Over into turn two. Jeff Gordon shows the way over Mark Martin as they go into the back stretch. Everybody appears to be okay through the south end of the racetrack, and now they head down the five-eighths of a mile back straight away, and Mark Martin takes a look to the inside of Jeff Gordon. Can he make a challenge? A tight battle there into turn number three, but Gordon holds on to the lead, and now challenges continue from Mark Martin. Mark wants to lead this first lap, you can tell by his aggressive manner. He wanted to come back first, but will not be able to do it. Jeff Gordon will lead. And look at this, four abreast in back of Jeff Gordon, but he leads another lap. He has led 129 now of the 321 laps in the first two, the first three now, Brickyard 400s. Jeff Gordon has led a lap in 11 consecutive races coming in to this Brickyard 400. Now make it 12. Lake Speed runs in third position. And behind him, a battle for fourth as Ken Schrader goes inside of Bill Elliott. Now things are starting to sort out. Joe Nemechek hanging in behind Bill Elliott. Here is Dale Earnhardt, who has fallen back to 13th position, leading this group of cars down the straightaway. Ernie Irvin is tucked in right behind him. Hutt Strickland, Rusty Wallace, and others. And they get sorted out and go into the corner two by two, but they were three and four wide there at the end of the main straightaway. I think we'll see that most of the day as cars three and four wide down the straightaways, but they must get at least no more than two abreast in the turns. Dale Earnhardt now up to 12th position. Ernie Irvin right behind him. Dale Earnhardt, the defending champion of the Brickyard 400. 
Bob over here in turn two, they are really throwing up the dirt. It's unbelievable. It's all the way up here in the booth. We're getting clouds of it. They've got those wheels way down into the dirt. And it's, if this, they're doing this on the second, third lap, it's going to be awful busy uh, halfway through this race. And again, that could cause some problems creating slick situations over there in the corners later in the race. Hut Strickland, car number eight, Ernie Irvin, 28, run side by side. Irvin holds the position for the moment. Behind uh, Hut Strickland is Rusty Wallace. Rusty Wallace finished second in this race last year. He's under the Hutt Strickland car, takes a spot away. There goes Jeremy Mayfield following Rusty Wallace. And Danny, you're right. We can see very clearly that the car's left side tires are way down in the grass, and we have a change of leader as Mark Martin goes to the front in corner number three. Bob over here in two, he was all over him. He was passing almost as they came off of, of turn two. He was looking for a way around three quarters of the way through the corner. Halfway down that straightaway, he was past it. Mark Martin has never led a lap here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, but you can put it in the record book. He has about a two-car length advantage on Jeff Gordon as they complete the lap. We have been experiencing electrical problems all morning long. We had a huge power failure here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway about uh, an hour and a half ago, and we're still having results of that, so bear with us. We may have occasional problems, but... Crash over are... here in two. Crash in two. Crash over here in two. There's Bobby Hillen, who crashed yesterday. Ricky Craven is involved. Ever see Dave Marcus on the inside? The green and blue car is Dave Marcus. So the accident occurred at the back of the field, and Dave Marcus is ready to pull away. We wonder if Dale Earnhardt will be coming in now. Of course, they have to bunch up the pack before the pit area is open. When that happens, Dale Earnhardt may come in and get relief from Mike Skinner. Here's a replay. Looks like Robert Presley was the first to go around. Robert Presley, Bobby Hillen in the 77. There's another one. And there Presley goes around. And the 41 car also spins. That's Ricky Craven. You know, I don't think there was a lot of damage. Doesn't appear to be a lot of damage. Danny, was there much damage to those cars? No, they all seem to drive off okay. I don't even know if there was any contact. But Benny, what happened, I think, that created it is he got down in that grass too deep. I'm not so sure he could tell from what was being thrown up by the car in front of him. And he got down the grass, just hooked the wheel, and around he went. So already we may be seeing an effect of that situation over in turn two. Here it is once again. Now, there might be some contact with the red car, whoever that is. Some contact that sends Robert Presley sideways, and then other drivers get on the brakes and spin as a result. There's Ricky Craven on your far left as that car takes a loop. And Bobby Hillen also spinning to avoid Robert Presley. Here it is from our speed shot off of corner number two. And all that smoke is created by Presley standing on the gas. When the car got sideways, he just stood on the gas to try to get it away from the wall. If he had hit the brakes, the car would have slid up. There's what Danny Sullivan's talking about. But Benny, if you go back and see that shot, you see the big cloud of dirt that they were throwing up uh, right before he spun it. I'm not so sure that didn't help help the situation. I got you. Here's Earnhardt down pit road. Jerry Punch, he's coming to you. And Benny, at 55 miles an hour, he will come down. I just radio to hey, the car feels comfortable. Tell Skinner he's going to have a fine ride today here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Seven-time Winston Cup champion, defending winner of the Rickyard 400, will come in the cruise and will put gas and driver change. That's all we're going to do. Gas it and driver change. Earnhardt wanted to start the race, would like to run all day. The crew tried to convince him not to. They said he stayed up last night and watched Clint Eastwood movies, thinking he might change his mind and try to stay in the car. No, he's going to come out and get healed for next week at Watkins Glen. Earnhardt out of the car. He will come across the wall. Mike Skinner... And listen to this crowd go wild as Earnhardt climbs out of the car. And Mike Skinner is in the car. As they're watching Mike get buckled in, Dale, the car pretty comfortable to you? Car pretty comfortable to you, Dale? 
He's watching Skinner uh, get buckled in the car, listening to what they're telling Mike Skinner, making sure that Mike is getting getting completely buckled in. Dale takes the helmet off. The car has been refired. Dale making sure that Skinner gets in the car. The critical element here is that they do not lose a lap. They wanted to make sure that they would not lose a lap in the pits here. As Skinner now still trying to get buckled in, finally gets the shoulder harness on. They put the window net back up. Trying to get the window net class. They have it full of fuel. And they have given the signal. The car's in turn four. Let's see if we can get a quick comment from Dale here as he gets his champ. Did the car feel okay to you out there? Yeah. Okay, you can see the disappointment on his face. Obviously not very comfortable. The pain in his face as he pulled that stimulator off his shoulder. A very, very uncomfortable and a very unhappy former Winston Cup champion. Benny, I think it's as much emotion as anything, don't you? He added to it. I mean, Earnhardt, as I said, he tested, he wanted to win this for the second straight time. So Dale Earnhardt has relinquished his ride to Mike Skinner, the 1995 NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series champion, who won the truck race down the street here at Indianapolis Raceway Park just a couple of nights ago. Here's Jack Aroot with a report on Jeff Gordon. You may wonder why Jeff Gordon dropped back to second when the number six car, Mark Martin, tucked up behind the rear spoiler. The car guys got very, very loose. He talked to Ray Evernham about it. Evernham said, hey, we're going to have to live with that all day. So he said, well, I think I'm going to let Mark lead for a little while. And indeed, Mark Martin has taken over the lead of this race with Gordon second, Lake Speed running in third position, Ken Schrader fourth, and Bill Elliott in the fifth spot. We are about a half a lap away from the green flag. Gary Gerald has this report from Pit Road. Just updating the situation for Dave Marcus and Ricky Craven. Both have been into the pits. Both uh, have gone back out. Now Marcus comes back in, conferring with his crew. They changed the right front tire. Body damage very, very minimal after that contact that brought out the yellow. So both Craven and Marcus now back on the course, Bob. As we said, there didn't appear to be a great amount of damage to any car that was involved in that incident over in two. Jerry Punch. Well, now Dale Earnhardt has caught his breath. He's talking to Davis with his crew chief and champ. I know that's probably the toughest thing you've had to do is climbing out of that race car. Yeah, it, uh, the car was real comfortable, and I, I wasn't in much pain riding along there. But, you know, the plan was to get him in there. So just in case anything happened, I wouldn't hurt myself anymore. And, Dadgum, it's hard to get out of there, Jerry. It just, it's, I mean, you know, that's this my life right here. Boy, an emotional deal, Earnhardt. You will never see that. This man loves and lives to race. Bob? Tough men in the race car, tough men all the other times, except when they're involved in an incident like Dale Earnhardt has experienced here today and this past week. He didn't look like a one tough customer then, but he is one tough customer. But again, he wanted it. He wanted it badly. He, he had it. He felt like he felt like this car was capable of winning today. We should be going back green here. The pace car. We're watching to see if it uh, does indeed come off of the racetrack. Yeah, at the last minute, Elmo Langley makes the hard left-hand turn, enters pit road, and now the field once again in the hands of the leader of the race, Mark Martin. The green flag is coming back out. Several cars move to the inside to try to gain a position here as the speeds increase and the field heads toward turn number one. Lake Speed is making a solid, sh solid showing in third position, hanging with Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin here in the early going. Lake Speed making a great showing. And I said that Earnhardt felt like he had the car to win. That's not putting too much pressure on Mike Skinner because Skinner, in three or four years, may be a driver of the caliber of Dale Earnhardt. But there's very few right now at that stage. This is Mike Skinner's 13th career start, his third in 1996. Pretty much single file formation here at the present time as the drivers are just uh, learning how things are going here, sorting their cars out. Johnny Benson moves to the inside, and now Jeff Gordon does likewise. He feels that Mark Martin has led too long. Remember, there is $400 available for each and every lap that is led. So Jeff Gordon wants to take back command and uh, lead as many points as he can, get the money. And, of course, also the person who leads the most laps will get five bonus points toward the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship. 
drafting a factor here, Benny? Yes, right now there's a lot of draft off that 24 car that Mark Martin is able to get in. Darrell Waltrip in the pit area, in the garage area. Looks like he's going to have to take the car to the garage area. They're in the pits right now. And here comes Mark Martin back on the inside. And he's doing it right in the middle of the corner. Who says the stock cars can't run through here three or two abreast? They certainly can. Martin is trying to get the lead from Jeff Gordon. But look at Lake Speed as he goes clear to the inside of the racetrack and takes second from Jeff. Martin is the leader again. I thought that Lake Speed was going to be able to take the lead with those two cars side by side. But Mark realized that what Lake was going to do, so he moved down to block him. And when Lake lifted off the gas, that second, that instant, that enabled Mark Martin to retain the lead. Lake Speed moving into second position. Down the back stretch, you're riding with Jeff Gordon. Speeds near 195 miles an hour before they hit the brakes in turn three. And Daryl Waltrip in the roof cam on top of his Chevrolet is going back into the garage area. Daryl recorded his first top 10 finish of 1996 just last weekend. So 11 laps are about to be completed here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Mark Martin is the leader of the race. Lake Speed running second. Jeff Gordon is third, followed by Bill Elliott and Terry Labonte. We'll be right back. Uh, I just reminded you, we have one of those uh, network breaks or local breaks. Uh, yeah. In fact, give me that. I'll just uh, keep it here. <clears throat> no. This is it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cal Petty's getting a little racy. Who was that, Davy Jones, Paul? They got to, Jones got taken to the bottom of the track in the 500 by uh, Salazar. Yep. The next one, okay. Started seventh. Seventh to fifth. <laughs> yeah, I move. Thirteen laps completed at the Rickyard 400 here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Mark Martin is the leader of the race. Lake Speed just behind. Jeff Gordon is trying to try an inside move or at least a look into turn one, but he cannot make the pass. That's the reason that Lake Speed is moving over on the straightaway is to keep Jeff Gordon getting an inside move. Lake Speed, the only driver who has started all 18 events in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series this year, who has not led a lap. He's close to it at the moment. He's only a few car lengths away, but Mark Martin looks like he is pulling out. He's probably getting five or six car lengths during the commercial break. Kenny Schrader, Bill Elliott, Terry Labonte. Bill Elliott started in seventh position in this race, and he has moved up to fifth spot right now. And this is the guy that led the most laps in this event last year. Bill Elliott had a 
crash at Talladega back in May. Most of you fans real, realize broke his hip and had to sit out for about a month. He came back at Daytona, so he has been to Daytona, to New Hampshire, and to Pocono, and to Talladega. So this is his fifth race back. He should be in racing trim by now. But he knows what it's like to drive hurt, as Dale Earnhardt experienced earlier today. Earnhardt has given up the car to Mike Skinner. That occurred during our first caution period of the afternoon. Focusing in on some of the other drivers as the single file formation comes down the main straightaway. Ward Burton and Morgan Shepard cruising down. There we see Ricky Craven on the inside trying to get by. I guess that's Dick. There we see. It looked like Mike Skinner has made a move to the front. He has gained. He would have had to start at last and is now in 33rd spot. Yes, so he has picked off several since he got into this car. He's looking really good over here through turn two. He's he's coming off of there with a lot of speed and he's passing guys every time he goes through here. Just ahead of him is Michael Waltrip. Side by side racing in the back of the pack. There is Waltrip, uh, Michael Waltrip. Daryl Waltrip is back in the garage area. Here's Jack Aru. And the Parts America car is out of this race with a blown motor. But Daryl, you're the first driver that can tell us about track conditions. What about the corners where they put the cement down? Well, first of all, I'm just devastated. Uh, I, I love this race, and uh, I thought I could win this race today. My car is awesome. Blew up yesterday afternoon, but the track itself, uh, it looked like they worked on a little bit overnight. Whatever they did to it made it a little slippery there in the beginning, but uh, it seemed like it was coming in okay. A uh, little bit tough conditions to drop the green flag on the biggest race of the year, but still looked like the track was going to come around, looked like it's going to be all right, but it is slicker than what we last uh, experience yesterday in our final practice but uh, I'm just I'm crushed I, I don't I don't know what to say I'm just crushed you know guys it's guys like Darrell Waltrip that know the tradition of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway he was born and raised just out there in Owensboro Kentucky he knows about the brickyard and you can believe he's crushed he's raced many times in the state of Indiana races a lot down in Salem Indiana some of the other short tracks as he was moving up in his racing career and yes Indianapolis is a very special place for Darrell Waltrip but Unfortunately, it's an early out for him today. You're riding with Mike Skinner down the main straightaway. Just ahead is Michael Waltrip. Those cars running 32nd and 33rd. Mark Martin still leads the Brickyard 400 over Lake Speed. Jeff Gordon, Ken Schrader, and Bill Elliott. And we'll return to the Brickyard 400 after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Can you, can you open us up during commercials? Hey, Benny? Yes. Yeah, Gordon is complaining the looseness is going into the corner. Going into the corner. Into the corner. And Benny, Mark Martin was a little bit tight. Really? He off. Said, said he's a little bit tight off, and uh, they're probably going to make an air pressure adjustment. Hey, Benny? Yo. You remember, you might want to talk about what you said earlier. On the thing about it, they were getting the setup right because this is a lot of things we've had. We put that cement dust down, they're getting the track dirty. How many of these guys are going to miss the setup a little bit? Yeah. Yes. Dale Jarrett up to 15th, guys, from 24th. Yeah, that's nice. Track temperature 120 degrees, uh, Benny. Move. On the Goodyear report. 
I think Marcus is headed for the garage. He just went by us very, very slowly. Maybe. Do you want something from Marcus? I'll stop him. I'm not sure he went in or not, Jack. Never mind. He went by me. I'm not going to go chase him now. Danny, can you see that graph? I got an interview from Marcus. Sorry, I didn't see anything. Like speed go, which mm -hmm. wow. Gordon has crashed. And back at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Jeff Gordon has just gotten into serious trouble coming off at turn four. Slapped out to the wall, and now with a fire burning under the rear of the car, he heads into the pits. Bob, Benny, Danny? Unbelievable situation here, Benny, as the young man from Pittsburgh, Indiana, comes limping into the pits, Jack. And he is not going to stop on pit road. They are going to bring it right into the garage. They think it got into the fuel pump, and that's it for young Jeff Gordon. 24 years of age, the crew grabs it as he makes the long turn. And They've the got a little carburetor fire underneath. They're going to get Jeff out of the car. Ray Evernham is here to help him. And, and, and there is a the pass lead. for the lead, guys. Back Lake to you. We'll get with Jeff in a minute. Lake Speed takes the lead as the caution flag comes out here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We presume it's because that they want to check the track for debris that might have put down when Jeff Gordon banged against the outside wall in turn number four. Let's take a look from the onboard camera of the DuPont Chevrolet. You see they're trying, the car will not turn. They're trying to get it. And there's one of the spam guys saying, get that car out. Let's watch. Jeff Gordon is going in turn three. He goes down low, and all of a sudden it looks like it looks like the right front tire lost the air. And like Jimmy Spencer did the very first race here, almost identical spot, he hits the wall. Is that turn three or the four? It's between three it's, and four. It's turn four yeah. that he actually hit the wall. Yeah. And he's knocked the gas, the fuel pump off, as Jack Root alluded to, and that's the fire that we see under the car. And there's the debris, see some stuff falling off the car. That's why NASCAR threw the caution flag. And obviously the point of impact. Well, he won the inaugural race two years ago. He finished sixth here last year. He put another chapter in his book by stealing the pole position a couple of days ago for the third annual Brickyard 400, he is out of the car and examining the damage that was caused to the DuPont Chevrolet when he hit the wall up in turn four. They just don't know what happened. They're trying to figure out what happened to the car. In any case, it undoubtedly will take Jeff Gordon out of a possible win at Indianapolis. Lake Speed now leads at the Speedway for the first time this year. Are you having trouble hearing me on the talk back? Well, can it be fixed, or are we going to live with it like this? I don't know. Hey, Benny, something broke on that car. Our tire went down, because he, he, I think that it right as he started to turn in there, something went wrong. He seemed to just giggle. Wiggle go the up and hit the wall. <clears throat> Update pit stop. Can you come back, Bobby? Emery. You okay, Bob? Yeah. I didn't know where we were going, so I joined. I didn't either. <laughs> you all see who's behind the pace car? Number three. It was actually just a mic test. <laughs> Yeah. 
They say that Elliott is fine. No debris problem, no damage to the race car. And I can update the adjustment on Mark Martin's car. All right, are you going to want, you ready for Gordon? Yeah. I told you he was ready and you couldn't hear me. That's what I'm a little frustrated about. I understand that, Bobby. That's why I'm frustrated. I, I did. That's what I'm saying. It's just a little frustrating. Jack has issues. Coming up today, experience auto racing a whole new way. It's a historic moment as 12 identical Firebirds run under the lights for the first time at Charlotte in the International Race of Champions. That's today at 4.30 Eastern and Pacific here on ABC Sports. Let's get an update on Jeff Gordon. Jack Aroot? Not the way you wanted to spend the day before your birthday. No, this isn't a good birthday present, but uh, I got a pretty good birthday present on, uh, you know, on, on Wednesday or Thursday when we signed the poll, but... You know, I mean, our biggest concern is running for this championship. I mean, we want to win, you know, this race really bad, but, uh, you know, we would have settled for uh, for anything other than, you know, some bad luck like this. So I didn't hit it real hard. I mean, I hit it hard enough to knock some things out of it, but uh, we'll be able to get back out there, I believe, and, and make some laps. But was that on account of the looseness you were feeling? Because we heard the radio report. You said the car was a little loose. No, uh, no, not at all. I blew a right front tire, so, you know, I, I was... I, the, the car was starting to handle pretty good. You know, I was just kind of by my time, just waiting to, uh, to see what the car was going to do as the fuel burned off and the tires went away. But, no, I just went in there and, and blew right front. I don't know why I did it. Well, if you take a look, which we're bringing the car back here, they're getting everything set up, guys, to literally put Jeff Gordon back in this race. Why? You know, Benny, because of points. Trying to get every point possible. As a matter of fact, on the caution flag, when the cars came around, Every car pitted, every car except one, that car. Mike Skinner stayed on the racetrack. Tell him why, Bob. Well, to uh, lead a lap and pick up the five bonus. That's right, he led a lap, he picked up five bonus points, and now he goes to the back of the field, but he has five points. Thank you. And of course, those points will actually go to Dale Earnhardt, and that's what's so very important about putting him in that car. Let's update a couple of things that have happened while we've been focusing on this terrific battle for the lead. Rusty Wallace has moved from 17th to 11th. Jeremy Mayfield from 19th up to 13th. Jimmy Spencer from 20th to 12th. Morgan Shepard 38th up to 23rd, and Dale Jarrett has taken a run from 24th to 17th. So some good moves already, and certainly the driver that you have to be very impressed with is Lake Speed because of his performance. But at the moment, it is Ken Schrader lined up behind the pace car. Lake Speed changed four tires, which was very surprising to me. And I get Mark Martin also very surprised that all those cars in front probably just changed two. So we've had two caution periods here in the first 25 laps. Well, getting around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is an experience that uh, very few people can indeed experience. To take a lap around here at speed in a NASCAR stock car is quite a uh, undertaking, and Darrell Waltrip did that for us yesterday. And here we come, down to take the green flag. Come down here, we cross this famous little stack of bench doing 190 miles. Try to keep it nice and low down on the white line, even knock up a little grass if you can. Out next to the wall in the short chute, into turn two, right down on the bottom grass line as we come off a of turn two and head down this famous long back straightaway where we'll hit 190 miles an hour. I gotta let go of the button because I'm flying right now. Heavy on the brake into turn three. Down low into turn three with the grass again flying. Right out next to the wall. Whoa, look out, DW. Down into turn three. Cocker down there and wide open on the throttle. Coming off of turn four into whoa, once again right out next to that wall. And here we come to complete a lap. Yes, sir, at the world famous Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Well, that was yesterday when Daryl Waltrip was in a much better mood. Unfortunately, he's already out of this race. 
And you can see the emotion in Daryl Waltrip's voice when we interviewed him just a moment ago, how devastated he said he used the word devastation and uh, correctly. He and Earnhardt wanted so much to complete to compete in this race today. Let's take a look at the pit summary. Lake Speed was in the lead when he went into the pits. He comes out in 10th and again as Benny indicated one reason for that is because he took four tires. So did Mark Martin. Ken Schrader was in third position and now is in the lead as we get set to go back to racing in the third Brickyard 400. Pace car pulls off Ken Schrader at the top of the field. Ken Schrader prior to today had led two laps in the Brickyard 400 but now takes the green flag as the leader Sterling Marlin Bill Elliott Kyle Petty. Terry Labonte and Johnny Benson are behind him. Benson took a look to the inside of Labonte. They're going into turn number one. On board, Johnny Benson. One of only two rookies in this race, and certainly the man who will win Rookie of the Year honors in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series this year. Again, takes a look to the inside of Terry Labonte as they reach the end of the backstretch. First time here, Benson. Oh, there we see a battle for the lead. Sterling Marlin under Kenny Schrader takes the lead. Can he make it to the start finish line? And Elliott on the inside. And the whole line is now lining up to try to get by Kenny Schrader. We may see Schrader lose several positions here. He's going to fall back into fourth spot from first to fourth and just the length of the front straightaway as Sterling Marlin takes over command of this race. Bill Elliott is in second spot. for Kyle Petty who lines up third as the cars come off the back the uh, second turn down the back stretch and fan out three four wide and look at Terry Labonte Johnny Benson has gotten by now several other cars trying to get by couldn't Labonte have a problem and the Sterling Marlin has lost the lead to Bill Elliott and also Kyle Petty's moved in to second place there goes Schrader back by wow a lot of positions being changed here in the early going Look at that. And Bill Elliott will get credit for leading this lap. Johnny Benson looks racy. We're riding with him as he goes into one. He's going to try to get the spot from Sterling Marlin. Oh, the cars are so close. Careful, boys. Careful. Benson has to get the left side tires way down below the white line, but he gets the job done. Gets the job done. Johnny Benson, the Pennzoil Pontiac. See, Mark Martin. The Valvoline Ford behind Sterling Marlin had fallen back to ninth place. Has worked his way up to seventh. Kyle Petty. Kyle Petty has a fine run here, running in second spot. But the man in command at the moment is Bill Elliott. Now we see Jimmy Spencer up there at the top of your screen. He comes way down to the inside of the racetrack. Rusty Wallace moved over in front of him and impeded his progress a little bit. That's Hutt Strickland in car number eight running alongside Jimmy Spencer. That battle would be for 16th position. Here is Rusty Wallace running in 15th. Rusty Wallace driving a Penske chassis. Now Kyle Petty is ready to take the lead, and they go into the corner side by side. Rust, uh, uh, rather, uh, Kyle comes out of the corner with the advantage, and Ken Schrader is going to go to second. And Benson tries his best, and he'll take the spot away. Move Elliott back to fourth place in one corner, and look at Benson trying to get on the inside of Schrader, and is going to do it. Wow, Johnny Benson in the Pennzoil Pontiac is taking second position. Right now we have two Pontiacs in front. It's very seldom this year have we had two Pontiacs up front. Kyle Petty has never led here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He is right now. What's going on, Benny? I mean, there for a while we saw a single file lap after lap, but now everybody is crazy out there. Well, I think Mark Martin was pulling those guys along as fast as they could run, and right now, here goes Benson. Let's see if Johnny can get the lead from Kyle Petty. They're over in turn three, and yes, indeed, Johnny Benson, the rookie in NASCAR Winston Cup, 
takes command of the richest race in NASCAR, the Brickyard 400. But Mark Martin has moved up to fifth place. There he is. So Johnny Benson takes over command with Kyle Petty second, Ken Schrader third, Sterling Marlin fourth. We'll be back with more from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in a moment. Man, this is good stuff here, isn't it? <laughs> Man, I thought it was going to be a boring race, but... Yeah, Sterling and Mark. Sterling knows where his bread's buttered on. If you have trouble getting our attention, don't hesitate to Punch knock me. us down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uncle Sterling. <laughs> Somebody's going to wreck here before long. Okay. Whoops. I'm going to work. I'm going to work Danny into the conversation a little bit more here too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. We're seeing uh, some great racing. Uh, is second one of the best battles on the racetrack right now is for third spot we ride with Sterling Marlin he's third looking back on fourth place Mark Martin Dixon from turn four coming down to start finish line and Benson will once again lead a lap there's third and fourth Jack Arood has a report on Johnny Benson, who's looking pretty good at this time, Jack. And Bob, throughout the core, early going of this race, his crew and his spotters have been talking about things. Stay smooth, watch this, watch that. When Johnny Benson took the lead, he keyed the radio and said, hey, guys, I think I'm going to like this. <laughs> I'd almost guarantee it. Johnny Benson is the first rookie to ever lead a lap in the Brickyard 400. Bob, one of the things that I'm noticing over here and seeing is if we saw that racing that's going on there, if the guys get a little slide, they get a little slide going or they're a little wide in the corner, it seems like they get passed by two or three cars. I think the track's slick enough. They're having to lift out of it more than they want. Everybody else is drafting off of them. That's why we saw such close racing. The last lap, though, the fastest car on the racetrack was Sterling Marlin, and he's as he recorded a lap of 170.464 compared to 169.4 for the leader, Johnny Benson. So Marlin is the fastest car on the racetrack at the moment, but doesn't appear to be gaining much on Kyle Petty. Here's Jack Aroot. Well, as Danny Sullivan said, that's exactly the problem with Bill Elliott. He go into the corner, the car was slipping and sliding, and he has to contend with that. That's why he's dropped off of the top four position. Well, Jack, I can tell you over here, I feel like I'm calling a dirt track race because we are just covered in dirt, grass. Every time they come through here, it's just throwing it all the way up on the top of these uh, turn two suites. Well, tonight on ABC, spend an hour under the spell of the world's funniest hypnotist. Then starting in September, Michael J. Fox will be on ABC every week in the new comedy, Spin City. But tonight, he's here in the Saturday movie presentation of Life with Mikey, co-starring Cindy Lauper and Nathan Lane. It's a whole night of laughs for the whole family tonight on ABC. 
Well, Danny Sullivan, I've seen you in many great races here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and things have settled down here just a little bit, but boy, there for a while, we were having some great competition on this track. Well, of course, you say that we're still having some great competition. It's a little further back in the pack than it was right there at the front. But these guys are just nose to tail sliding it through here, throwing up dirt. Uh, it's fabulous watching this. Uh oh, Kyle Petty. And he takes out Sterling Marlin. And Mark Martin somehow gets by. And Kyle's going in the wall. Head on. Oh, oh. Terrific impact for Kyle Petty. Boy, that was a big hit. Crashes in turn four. It comes as the field was coming down to complete lap number 38. Heavy contact with the wall on the outside by Kyle Petty. He slid across the track and hit Sterling Marlin, and then terrific head-on impact with the inside wall. There is Sterling Marlin's battered machine. And Sterling is moving around. Wow, I mean, that was big. Let's take a look from our turn one camera as to what happened as Petty was coming out of corner number four. Looked like exactly the same thing as Jeff Gordon just lost the air in the right front tire. And Sterling Marlin had no place to go. And look at Mark Martin. How he gets by is beyond me. But now Kyle's car, the accelerator, I think, is hung. He has no brakes. And bam, into the inside wall almost head on. And from another angle on our camera from the tower terrace, the car just shoots straight to the wall. You guys, I agree with you. That looked like something went down like a tire, and I wonder if that's coming from just all the stuff we're seeing, all the grass, if it's pulling up any gravel off this track, uh, that they're having a tire problem with punctures. And now from uh, Sterling Marlin's perspective, looking out the back glass, and he was just an innocent victim of Kyle Petty's situation up there in turn number four. And the safety workers are at the cars of both Sterling Marlin and Kyle Petty. NASCAR officials have are talking to Kyle. Pit Road, of course, is closed. That's exactly where the uh, accident has occurred at the entrance to the pit area. So we'll return to the Brickyard 400 after this message and a word from our ABC stations. I thought maybe he blew a tire, but I'm not sure. There was smoke there from the right front, but, but I think he, that was the, brake. The, the, yeah, no, the that was, was his brake. He'd already turned yeah. with Bob before yeah. they, he put that brake on. He'd already lost it. Yeah. Yeah. The tire was flat, so he, but he did slam on the brakes the last instant. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, yeah, he just stopped. Angle. He just stopped turning right there. You just see yeah. him. He's going. Car moves just a hair, and then boom, he just turns right. You know, Bob, keeps going straight. what we might want to do is we might want to find somebody from Goodyear to talk about this tire situation, what they think is going on. Yeah. Good call, Bob. That's correct. No, I understand any pits are still closed. Yes. I don't see where. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. 
shoot you're thinking of. I'm down here with Felix Sabatis, and those guys, they're watching replays, too. No radio contact to them from the driver. Bobby, would I stay out here for pit stops or go back into Marlin Garage? Turn four crash has slowed the Brickyard 400 here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Kyle Petty and Sterling Marlin are the drivers involved. The cleanup goes on in the fourth turn as the field has been unable to make pit stops because the cars have come to a rest at the entrance to pit road at the north end of the racetrack. Let's take a look at a couple of more angles and replays of this crash, which looks very, very bad. Kyle Petty, the 42 car. The car just all of a sudden goes straight like the right front tire lost air, slams the outside wall, and then I think he gets knocked out there. Sterling Marlin comes along, hits him again, because the car is, is awfully fast now, so Kyle is not hitting the brakes. He's not slowing the car down. The car is going on its own, and it looks like the throttle's on, because it goes to that wall with so much force, you would have thought that the first lick would have stopped the car, but he still had a tremendous amount of force when he hit the second time. From another angle now, the car just does not turn. At the apex of turn number four, the car continues straight. That's Johnny Benson, the leader of the race ahead. And right there, the car just does not turn. And Petty, at this point, is along for the ride. He's a rider. And he's locked up. But look, he gets hit here. Now it'll turn him back right again. He, he goes in here and takes a pretty good lick on this next one. Watch here. He's going to go up, hits the wall again. And boy, turns it around. Mark Martin just gets through. And then, like you say, Benny, he doesn't slow down at all for that inside wall. Yeah, I think the throttle is hung on that car. So we will await medical conditions on both drivers, Sterling Marlin and Kyle Petty. Speaking from experience, they got great medical staff here, and uh, they got a fabulous facility down there in the infield. And, of course, uh, the hospital's not that far away. Dr. Henry Bach is the director of medical facilities here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and uh, will go to work now. The pit road is closed at this point uh, because of the attention down in that corner. Now get your game cards ready. It's time now for the Budweiser Fast Track Sweepstakes. The leader at 100 miles was Johnny Benson. So you write down Johnny Benson on the game card and you could win a race fans fantasy, some lucky winner. We'll race off to next year's Brickyard 400. Be sure to stay tuned for the 200 mile leader and your chance to win brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. Some of those cars moving up as we remain under yellow for the accident off of turn four. Driving Sterling Marlin and Kyle Petty. Uh, Wally Dallenbach has moved from 18th to 5th. Jeff Burton from 28th to 7th. And Ward Burton from 32nd up to 9th. So we are under yellow at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It is our third of the day. 41 laps are complete. We're just past the one quarter of the race, 100 mile point. We'll be back. I thought you were going to do that one, Bobby. Okay, I'm. I, uh, I'm not far from Steve Myers, a Goodyear vice president. I'm gonna. He's uh, he's checking on a couple things. I'll get. I'll have him Good. in just a minute. Good. Yeah. Now we're just standing by for the pit stop. Has that chair ever yeah. broken, Paul? Yeah, because they're, they're right now what, what Benson's is trying to figure out is some, a little bit of tire management, whether to go, you know, whether to go uh, scuffs or not. That has served me perfectly for years. <laughs> hey, can I speak? You may. Okay, uh, we were monitoring the radio for Mark Martin up here, and his crew chief told Mark that Goodyear thinks the tire problem is from a low tire pressure. Okay. Doesn't make a lot of sense, does it, Benny? That many laps? Well, yeah. That when these these teams play with the air pressure and, and they get them too low, they they will do that. It'll yeah. just give up like that and turn on him, or it'll pick up a puncture. It'll no, it'll blow out. Okay. They'll just they will finally work and work and work until they just blow the sidewall up. Okay. Thanks, Benny. Jeff Burton started 28th 
Who's, who's Mike's man? I'll be with Steve Myers, Bobby, from Goodyear. Got me, Bobby. Steve Myers, Goodyear. I'm with Steve Myers of Goodyear, Director of Sales and Marketing. We're back at the Brickyard 400. After 40 laps, the leader, of course, was Johnny Benson. He's led nine of the 40 laps. We've had eight different lead changes. The front of the field has been absolutely terrific with Gordon, Martin, Schrader, Marlon, Petty, Benson all up there. Of course, uh, we have Jeff Gordon already out after contact in turn four. Average speed is down 129 miles an hour. Here, there are the leaders during the run with Martin, Benson, Gordon, Lake Speed, Elliott, Schrader, Mike Skinner replacing Dale Earnhardt and out of the race. Darrell Waltrip, Sterling Marlin, and Kyle Petty. But Jerry Punch, there's some concern about tires. Steve Myers, Director of Sales and Marketing for Goodyear. Steve, you guys are researching it. What have you found out so far? Uh, we're still gathering data right now. There's been two tires, and we're taking a look at uh, uh, what the air pressures were, looking for any type of uh, puncture or maybe something from debris. Uh, we've just mounted one of the tires right now, and as soon as we have some information, we'll be sure and let you know. We're just At this point, we're still gathering information. All right, to Steve Myers. They're checking on they'll get back. Let's, let's go down and check in with Jack Rhodes standing by at our leader's pit. Well, Jerry, the crew has decided and talked it over with Johnny Benson. They are going to change left side tires only. Now, why? Well, they feel they've only got about 15 hard laps on the right side. And let's go to Gary Gerald. Gary? Brushing that grass off the front grill work, that's one of the concerns to avoid overheating. More tire change for Terry Labonte. They said they need two laps after every stop to get the feel of the track. This one was a 24-second stop. Service all the way around. Some took four. Johnny Benson only took two, Benny. Well, the last time he changed the right sides, this time he changed the left sides. Looking down on turn one of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway as the field comes out after the stop on lap 43, still under the yellow. Aerial views of the Speedway are brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. Beautiful shot on this beautiful Hoosier day at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, much unlike the weather conditions that we experienced uh, every day last year. And there we see the suites, and there's downtown Indianapolis. Johnny Benson still retains the lead. Mark Mark comes out second. Looks like Jeff Burton is going to come out in pretty good shape. And Bill Elliott also. Well, as we watch the field continuing to work around under the caution here, we'd like to remind you that Sunday, August 18th, the Indy Racing League kicks off their 96-97 season. Indy 500 winner Buddy Lazier, who's here at the track today. And the drivers of the IRL head to New Hampshire for the True Value 200. That's Sunday, August 18th, and it'll be right here on ABC Sports. Still under caution, let's go to Jackaroo. Well, guys, you were talking about why did Johnny Benson only take left side tires. Little bit of tire management going on right now. It seems the team has scuffed a few, few tires in, but what they feel is for 15 laps, Benny, the sticker tires will work well, but scuff tires seem to be better after 15 laps. So what they're trying to do is get a couple of sets of scuffs on the left side to use later in the race. Let's go to Gary Gerald. Gary? Jack, Greg Sack started this race in the fifth row. You can see a big wheel mark on the left-hand side. The bonnet is up. They're working underneath. They've had the carburetor off. They're still making adjustments. They fired the engine. Now the carburetor going back on. But he's been here a long, costly period of time. Real tough break for Greg Sack. Greg Sachs took over this car earlier this year after Steve Grissom was dismissed and we're getting set to go green. Mark Martin pulling down to the uh, inside of Johnny Benson there for a moment in the corner. Now the field is aligning for the restart. We've been 
caution here for several laps because of the incident up in turn number four involving Kyle Petty and Sterling Marlin. The field behind the pace car, off of corner number two, headed down the back stretch. You know, Kyle Petty was running. We uh, in qualifying. Right now, let's check in with Dr. Jerry Bunch. Back in the garage area, Jeff Gordon's crew continuing the work. While you look at the car, let me ask Ray Everham. Ray, how far are you from getting this car back on the racetrack? Uh, it'll be a while. It's been pretty bad. Um, if we get it, it's just going to be make up a few positions. It's pretty well uh, trashed it. It's, it's, uh, it's hurt the frame pretty bad. The whole roll cage is knocked in on the right side. So, you know, just thank God kids are right. We just have to do the best we can and, and go on to our next race. Well, Ray Everham and the crew trying to get it straightened out for a couple of laps, possibly to pick up some spots. Paul? There's a lot of fans here hoping that they get Jeff Gordon back into the fight. We'll be back for the green flag. Good. I would imagine that's why Mark Martin pulled up outside the pace car to tell him mm -hmm. he can't go green. Well, I can go on back there now, Bobby. I, my, my light must not be working, Bobby. I, I try. Oh, is it? Okay, okay. Bob and Benny, okay. uh, they okay. did change yeah. the carburetor on Greg Sachs. That was a whole not replacement. Not really, Steve. Okay. Bobby, I'm going to head on back to the hospital. I'm here. They're taking Kyle, the Methodist, so I'm going to go back and check with Henry. Okay. Let's cut through here. Cut through here. Quicker. Steve, you see those guys running through the garage area getting their gas? Got down through Gasoline Alley. See the, see the camera right side of us. Yeah, there you go. Well, I mean, you know, in any car, in any 500, the gasoline stays in the pits. Here, they've got to go to the gas station and get it. I'm actually going to go back by Sterling's crew on the way by, see if I can grab somebody <laughs> and talk to Sterling. <laughs> Did Sterling have to go to the hospital? Well, he may not have. I'm going to check at their crew back here in the garage. That's what everybody was doing down Kyle. Felix's pit was trying to get the scuff tires. We'll have Sterling Marlin with me. Uh, yeah, come on. I get the camera to keep up. Come on. You're looking down on the area just behind Gasoline Alley. That's Sterling Marlin's car. They're taking a hard look at it. Uh, I'm sure, sure they're just taking a look at the damage. Uh, Jerry Punch, what's his situation? Well, fortunately, Sterling's okay. Sterling, good to hear you're not hurt after a pretty hard lick up there. What happened? I thought Kyle cut a tire down, uh, just the exit off four and hit the outside wall. And uh, I seen him hitting it, and it wasn't nowhere to go. He just comes straight across, and, and we tagged him, and uh, that's about the end of it. How bad is your car hurt? The whole front end from where we stand looks like it's pretty much sheared away. Yeah, it knocked all the right front, sheared the headers off and everything, and uh, hit Kyle pretty much behind the left front tire. And it uh, looks like he's okay. He was conscious and talking, and uh, I guess it might have sprung his neck or something and hollering about his leg a little bit, but uh, I believe he's okay. People researching the tire situation. Any clues to what may be happening out there? We saw Jeff Gordon's car veer in. Now, Kyle's, any thoughts about right front tire problems? Uh, have you had any problems all week? Well, we test the tires here for Goodyear, and they got absolutely a great tire for here. I mean, it's awesome. Uh, same tire run here in Pocono, over Michigan. And uh, they put some sod around the track, and, and they put some spikes in it. So we don't know if the spikes are coming up. We're running through the dirt a lot, and maybe pulling them up and running them over them and uh, cutting the tires down. Well, that's Sterling Marlin currently fifth in the Winston Cup points. If they can, they want to try to get what's left of his Kodak Chevy fixed and get him back on the racetrack. Well, they were going to take a green flag, and then they did. Look at the gouges in the track there. 
They were going to take the green, and then Mark Martin pulled up, uh, surged past the leader, and we think he may have told the pace car there's still some dust and debris out there, so they've elongated this yellow a little bit, but now we're ready to go back to green. It'll be Benson, Martin, Elliott, and Burton, followed by Ernie Irvin. Let's go to Bob. All right, Johnny Benson there in corner number three with Mark Martin right behind him, Bill Elliott third. Jeff Burton is running fourth, and Ernie Irvin is in fifth position. Keep an eye on the eighth place car. That's Bobby Hillen, who crashed yesterday, had to go to the rear of the field in the backup car, but Bobby has worked his way back up to the eighth position. Johnny Benson in command now as we get set to go back to racing in about a quarter of a lap. See, that's why Dale Earnhardt got out of his car. That's what Richard Childress, all the crew, did not want. Something to happen to Earnhardt likes happened to Kyle Petty and to Jeff Gordon. Because in his condition, he couldn't stand a loop like that. Pace car pulls off, and the green light ready to come back on. Will Ford waves the green flag. Here we go once again. That caution was for nine laps while they cleaned up the wreck up in turn number four. Takes the green flag as Greg Sachs come back, comes back out on the racetrack. Now we see Jimmy Spencer trying to make a move on Jeff Burton as Ernie Urban holds down four spot. Ernie took that four spot away from Jeff Burton going down in turn one. This is from the rear bumper of Johnny Benson's Pontiac. Looking back at Mark Martin. Through here, Mark was looking like he wanted to make the move going down that back straightaway. He was kind of tucking up under in, in the inside of him coming off the two. Here they come. Johnny Benson lead one more lap. Impressive performance by the rookie from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Wow, Mark was in the dirt that time, kicking up the dirt. All the dust fly up as he put those left sides in the dirt. And Benny, you see what I mean? How he drops back a little bit when he goes in there. I think he has to lift a little bit. He drops a little bit of ground to Benson. Yep. It's Jeff Burton running back in fifth position. Spencer is sixth. Bobby Hill is taking over another spot, and Rusty Wallace is up to eighth spot now. There is Ward Burton moving to the inside of Robert Presley in the 33 car as he comes up on the seven of Jeff Bodine. So some good racing back here in the mid pack. And Dale Jarrett is on the inside of Presley. There we see Rusty Wallace who ran so well here last year, followed by Jeff Bodine. two sets of spotters that are working here this afternoon one group of spotters between turns one and two and another group between turns three and four because there's no way you can see all the way around this racetrack and of course the spotters are the eyes of the driver uh, in other parts of the racetrack and we understand the NASCAR is telling the spotters to tell their drivers to stay out of that grass because that could be the thing that is resulting in what we have seen here this afternoon and some tires going down. Mr. Sterling Marlin alluded to it in his interview when he said the, as I understand the sod they use staples to hold the sod down to the dirt and it is a metal piece and they're concerned that some of these staples may be coming out and going on the racetrack. Well we knew when we came here that the track was going to be a story because of the repaving. We also knew that because they took the rumble strips out the drivers would have a couple of more feet to work with but we did not expect them to run in the grass as they're doing Paul. You know here's something that I find interesting this race of the past two years the only running to the race has been won by Chevrolet. Look at the top ten Pontiac a whole string of Fords and then another Pontiac. There's no Chevrolet near the top ten right now. Robert Preston is the first Chevrolet, and he is in 13th spot. And the Chevrolet drivers were complaining during the testing here, and they were predicting at that time that they weren't going to be able to keep up with the Fords because of the aerodynamic uh, rules that NASCAR has set regarding the Fords. And at the moment, the Fords and the Pontiacs are the strongest. There's Robert Presley, the best among the Chevrolet contingent, running in 13th position. 
followed closely by Terry Labonte, the Kellogg's car. He's also in a Chevrolet. Johnny Benson, the leader of the race, the last rookie to win a NASCAR Winston Cup event was Davey Allison in 1987 at Talladega. We'll return to the Brickyard 400 after this message and a word from our ABC station. Presley uh, doing fine after Good that point, Paul. first yellow. Can you have someone from RF come down to Mont Pit? I'm having broken problems with my equipment again. That's correct, yes, sir. Look at that corner. Isn't that great? You never get to look out to see that. Bob Goodrich, I've got Henry Bach when you get back, okay? Okay. Yes, uh-huh. Yeah, we talked to Sterling, but everybody Dr. else okay. The medical center regarding the driver of car number 42. He is awake and alert. Pains in the left knee, the chest, and the neck. Pains necessitating is being transported to Methodist Hospital for further <laughs> evaluation. Gonna pass him. to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and ABC's coverage of the Brickyard 400 being led at the moment by Johnny Benson, closely pursued by Mark Martin, Bill Elliott, and Ernie Irvin. Those cars right together on the racetrack, but Johnny Benson able to hold off the challenge of Mark Martin at the moment. Let's go to the medical compound here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and get an update on the condition of Kyle Petty. Jerry Punch. Dr. Henry Bach, director of the Hanna Emergency Medical Center. And Hank, uh, what's the status on Kyle Petty? Kyle Petty's on his way to Methodist Hospital for x-rays. He came in here, he was awake and alert, complaining of some pain in his left knee and a little bit of chest pain on his right side. But he was never unconscious and he's in good condition right now. And we'll probably have some results in about 20 minutes of his x-rays. Thank you very much, Dr. Henry Bach. And by the way, Richard and Linda Petty were up here. Kyle's parents, they got in the car to go to Methodist Hospital, but that is great news considering the, the ferociousness of that impact in his Pontiac. Indeed, Kyle hit hard three times, actually. The initial impact, and the car spun into the outside wall again, and then the probably the worst collision was with the outside wall, or the inside wall, as the throttle apparently hung up on the car. But the good news is that Kyle Petty does not appear to be seriously injured. And the worst part about that was he was not able to brace himself that third blow because he was flopping around in the car. He had knocked himself silly. He might not have been unconscious, but he was he was not holding on and braced himself. So he really flung himself against those seat belts when he ran in the inside wall. Johnny Benson did not lead a lap in the first team, first 15 races of his rookie season. He's now has led three of the past four. Led 17 laps at Loudon, five at Pocono, 
and is continuing to rack up the number of laps ahead of the field here this afternoon. And again, $400 is paid for every lap to the leader. Looks Bob like they're over, sorry guys, but Bob over here, the guys that seem to be handling the best, besides Benson, who looks almost like he's on rails, are the Burton brothers who uh, have really come up and are running. One of them's running fifth, and uh, Ward's running fifth, and I think Jeff's running eighth, and they're looking really good through here. Yes, indeed, there is Jeff in the 99 car. He is in fifth position, and Brother Ward is back in eighth spot. Jimmy Spencer following Jeff Burton. I started saying a moment ago, look like that camera next to the grass. The cars were getting closer and closer to the camera. We've noticed Ernie Irvin here holding back just a little bit and dropping back from the back bumper of the uh, Bill Elliott car. And we understand be that's because Ernie's car handles well until he gets right under the back bumper and then loses the handling on it. What happens when he drives up on the back of Bill Elliott's car, he loses the air on the nose of the car, and then the car starts pushing. As long as he's back there and able to get some air across the nose of the car, he gets that downforce, and it'll turn. That's the problem Rusty Wallace had last year as he chased down Dale Earnhardt. Remember, he caught him, but he couldn't pass him. When he got close to Earnhardt, he'd lose the air on the nose and things start pushing. Danny Sullivan, watch the situation out there in turn two. We know that the NASCAR officials have asked the spotters to tell their drivers to stay out of that grass if possible. Is there any less out your way? No, they come through every lap. There's somebody or two or three, four cars in it. If I look over the edge and look down against the wall, there's a tremendous amount of grass down here. Literally, we feel like we're at a dirt track race. I mean, we're just covered in dirt and grass. Uh, Benson looks really good through here. He stays off of it. He's down low, but but everybody else is all over the place. And there is a good look at a close-up of that grass, and you can see how it's run over constantly <laughs> <laughs> about every time they go by. Yeah, and what's happening down there, I had a look at it when we were doing our ESPN show, and it's got a netting in there, and that's what they're talking about. It's like netted, and the grass is on top of it, and then they staple it down. And I believe what's coming up is that uh, those staples, because the netting has just seemed like it was made out of plastic. Looks, it looks like Jeff Burton is closing up on the back of these cars. And Jimmy Spencer. Good uh, five-car battle here for the lead. Single file down into corner number one. There's Jeff Burton and Jimmy Spencer. The Berwick, Pennsylvania native finished 43rd in his first run at the Brickyard, and last year he was 24th. That 43rd finish reflected an accident that uh, Jimmy experienced in the inaugural Brickyard 400. You know, I may be able to give the Ford fans a little bit of hope here while we're looking at the top 10 uh, and keeping track of all that. Also, the Fords thus far have turned the fastest laps of the race, most notably that of Mark Martin at 170 point nine miles an hour Benson's been flying pretty good though he's been up above 170 in recent laps in the past two he's dropped off into the 169 range 99 laps to go 61 on the board at the moment and the leader is Johnny Benson Mark Martin Bill Elliott Ernie Irvin the top four We checked turn two just a moment ago regarding the grass and where the drivers are running in it. Now we're going to check and see whether or not they're continuing to run in the grass in turn number four. It doesn't seem to be nearly as much of a problem in three as it is in two and four. And now here come the cars into corner number four. Now they're maybe not quite down as far as they are in turn two, but still they're running in it. Well, they get right on the edge, and again, they want to get, if they could go six more inches, the car would run just a tick faster. Here comes Ernie Irvin trying to look on the inside of Elliott. This would be the battle for third position. Irvin low in the corner. Now that was turn one, and he was down in the dirt there. That looks pretty torn up. And I'm looking at the grill of some of these cars coming here, and they're all matted with... Uh, grass you know you can see that light color of green in there 
They've got to watch the water temperature gauge to make sure that the grass, they don't get enough grass on the grill that the car will overheat. Ernie Irvin led four 11 laps in 1994 and has five straight top five finishes in NASCAR Winston Cup competition. NASCAR is telling the teams, we're going to start, if you don't keep out of the grass, we will start penalizing you. That could get interesting. Now, that could get very interesting. But it's uh, about the only way that you can get the point across, perhaps, because those drivers are going to run down in there if they can. But if they may suffer a one-lap penalty, it's certainly going to keep them out of there. Kind of puts you in mind of a few years back, the Indianapolis 500, when there was the apron where that grass is now. And they said, don't run under the white line. And then they started black flagging people who did it. Let's go to Jerry Punch. I'm sorry, Gary Gerald. Uh, Paul, actually, it's an interesting follow-up here. This news is not being received well by all of the drivers. Wally Dallenbach, for one, we were told, when informed of this, told the crew on the radio, well, then why don't we just let them drive the race car? <laughs> He's not real happy about this. Jack. Gary, one of the things that all the crews are concerned about is keeping their fuel cool. Now, what does that mean? Well, you know, if the fuel's a little cooler when it goes in, it'll actually build more horsepower. So what a lot of teams have done is they've built up these heat shields. Once the 11 gallons are here ready to go, they cover them up until it's time to put it in the tank. We'll be uh, exper expecting pit stops before too long within the next uh, 10 laps or so, undoubtedly. Three-tenths of a second lead by Johnny Benson over Mark Martin. Bob, back to what we were talking about before. If they're going to start penalizing the guys for running through the dirt, I don't know who's going to be left running. They're, <laughs> they're all going through there at some time. And Benny, you know better than anybody. You know if your car's not handling that good or you got a little push, you're going to put it down there as low as you can to try to get that front end to work. You oh. want to get down. To... Oh, look at this. Look at Skinner. Oh, wow. Man. Almost in the wall. He came out of corner number four with a head of steam build up, and he, if he didn't scrape the wall, he came very close to doing so. Mike Skinner, there he is, mired back in this group of traffic, and he right now is shown in 28th position. That is a huge group of cars there. It's Bobby Hamilton, the STP car, trying to get by Bobby Labonte. Forces Labonte up out of the groove. Takes a spot away. Bobby Hamilton had a terrific crash here at the Speedway yesterday during happy hour and had to go to the backup car. Now we see Michael Waltrip and Ricky Rudd moving to the inside. Michael Waltrip gets past uh, Skinner. Skinner. Well, Skinner moved down to go past, I think, Ricky Rudd or someone, and while he was alongside, Michael just got a good grasp and went by both of them. Ken Schrader is involved in this fight also, along with Ricky Craven. Craven comes to the inside of Ken Schrader, and can he pick up the position? Not at the moment. Dick Trickle right behind Ricky Craven, and now Craven gets oh, a good run off the corner. Some contact, oh, excuse me, Bob, some contact between the 43 and the 90. I thought Dick Trickle had bought the farm. Sorry, you can't. I almost bought the farm with a heart attack. <laughs> Benny, I couldn't believe how sideways he got through there and caught it. Neither could I, Danny. You know, I have found it to be amazing how many corrections they're actually able to make in the corners here. This racetrack is almost flat, nine degrees, and yet they're able to make all kinds of little turns, especially on the exit. Here is Rudd working to the inside of Skinner again as Michael Ken Schrader Wal and Michael Walter battle it out. Walter takes a spot away. There goes Skinner by, so Kenny Schrader is struggling with the Bud car now. Just some terrific competition here. Ted Musgrave is back here. That's Rick Mast in the number one car. And Ernie Irvin has just taken third place from Bill Elliott. So now he'll let, worry, let Bill Elliott worry about pushing when he pulls up on the back bumper of the Texaco Ford. In the right rear window of the Robert Yates car, number 28, driven by Ernie Irvin, there is a sticker saying, in memory of Scott Brayton and his winning spirit. Mark Martin is getting racing now. Looking 
back on Mark Martin from the leader, Johnny Benson's onboard camera. Let's take a look at a replay. Watch this. Watch Dick trickle out sideways. He's going to get. I don't think it was any contact, as a matter of fact. Now that I look at that angle. Benny, is that, is that just because that other car, the 43 car, uh, was underneath him and just took some air away? Did it got him moving sideways? I believe that's exactly right, Danny So. Let's go down to Jackaroo. Boy, you guys are unfair to me. I'm telling you all about this, this thing, the way to keep the fuel cool. You don't even put me on camera. Here is the mat. You see, it's heat sensitive. It absorbs the heat. It keeps the 11 gallons of fuel cool. Now, do you think we could get one of these for me and the rest of the guys in the pits? Because it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> the temperature has been increasing every day that the cars have been here. Wednesday, temperature in the mid-70s. On Thursday, temperature in the upper 70s. Friday, the temperature reached the low 90s and it's going to reach the mid to upper 80s, I should say, here this afternoon. And, of course, whenever there is a change of temperature, it affects the handling of the car. Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, earlier today, we saw Kenny Schrader toward the front of the field, and Benny, you mentioned a moment ago, he's had tremendous problems the last 15 or 16 laps. No matter what the crew has done to the car, it continues to get loose when he gets in traffic. When the car gets up behind the Budweiser and Chevrolet, he said, I can't drive it. I can't even turn it in the corner. They're going to make some radical changes in the chassis on this pit stop to somehow try to dial that car in. Let's check in with Gary Gerald. We're talking about Fords on the move. The 88 Ford, driven by Dale Jarrett, is making a terrific run. He's now in the top 10. He's pushing the envelope a bit. He just told his crew that two laps ago, he brushed the turn three crash wall. He said the car's still all right. And the last guy he just passed was Rusty Wallace. So he's come from 24th to the top 10, now in the eighth position. Well, we just had Mark Martin over here get passed. It was, it was Ernie Irvin just moved under him. Mark's got quite a bit of ground there. Ernie just made a great move on him. So Ernie Irvin does go into second place, but while they were battling, Johnny Benson was able to get away a little bit, and now Benson has a 6-8-9 car length lead on Ernie Irvin as the others as they come down to complete another lap. This is lap number 71 of 160. For those of you who are concerned about Jeff Gordon, he crashed very early in the event. They are still working on the car to try to get him back out and get a few more Winston Cup points. But he is okay. The only driver injury so far, Kyle Petty, on his way to Methodist Hospital for x-rays. Injuries not believed to be serious. Sterling Marlin also involved in that crash with Kyle. He is okay. Now, good battle shaping up for third here as Bill Elliott comes up on Mark Martin. Mark all of a sudden losing the handle. Pressing the leader just a moment ago has dropped back two or three seconds. Benny, it really looks like if they if they make a mistake and get the car a little sideways, have to lift out of it, they really lose a tremendous amount of momentum. I agree with that. It's getting off the gas. It's, it's almost like Talladega. The more you stay on the gas, the faster you're going. I was going to say it isn't as bad as when you lift in a restrictor plate race, and this is not a restrictor plate race, but still, anytime you pop that throttle, it takes a long time to get the RPMs and the momentum back up. Ernie Irvin closing in on Johnny Benson here. Jack Arute has a report on Johnny Benson as Urban puts the heat on him. Well, he doesn't want to pit just yet. You know why, guys? They want to get to the halfway mark, and there's a pass. Yes, sir. Ernie Urban wants the lead, and Ernie Urban gets the lead. The pass occurring in turn number four, and lap number 73 as he crosses the line will be led by Ernie Urban. Now, Jack, go ahead with your point. Well, here's exactly what was happening. Well, Ernie Irvin was making the pass. Larry McReynolds was here talking to the Benzoil crew at Johnny Benson. They were going to map out a strategy to go to the halfway mark. The car on Benson is a little bit tight. Benson wanted to try and get the halfway cash bonus. Then both of them would pit under green flag conditions unless the yellow came out. That's snooker, guys. 73 laps completed, and so we're less than seven from the halfway point of the third Brickyard 400 from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. There are the top five and six through ten. We'll be right back. Pit stops right about 
the halfway, Bob? Yeah. Interesting down here. Mart Martin will pit on lap 80. Yeah, Bobby, right. I'm going to hang with Stu Grant here. I figured. Right on the halfway. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Director of for Goodyear Tire. Yeah. This is Leo Mel's the play. new Leo. By the way, Leo is here. I'm so yeah. And you he's been to. What is this? Sarah's here. Sarah with him. <laughs> uh, I'm not interested in that. <laughs> hey guys. Yep. Yeah. Well, I don't know whether Stu will tell you this, but one of the engineers just came up here to Benson Stu and said, we're seeing some low air pressures on some of the teams, and don't do it. Mm. Don't be tempted. Try to get there. Thanks. Thank you. You'll just do one of those two things a little bit of air pressure in the right rear, a little bit of bite out, not do both. That's my Six laps completed in the Brickyard 400. At the moment, Ernie Irvin has the lead. Johnny Benson is second, followed by Mark Martin, Bill Elliott, and Jeff Burton. And we should be ping seeing pit stops before too long. This is how Johnny Benson lost the lead to Ernie Irvin. This is the camera on the back of Benson's Pontiac. Ernie Irvin just pulled to the inside and shot by. Wow. He got a huge ovation on that head when he came by the stands. Benny, I know you guys are sitting up in that nice, comfortable air-conditioned booth, and we're standing out here in the elements, but we've really noticed the temperature just changed with the cloud cover. It's gotten a lot cooler over here. I'm sure that's going to allow for a little bit uh, quicker racing. These guys are really sliding the car through here. And the most impressive guy at the moment for me is Dale Jarrett. He's catching that lead group by himself with nobody to tow him around. Let's get more on this tire situation from Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, I'm with Stu Grant, Worldwide Director of Motorsports for Goodyear. And Stu, you've been researching it, looking at the tires. What have you found out? Yeah, we've had a chance to dismount Jeff Gordon's right front tire. And we've had a chance to look inside that. There are definitely... Uh, several cuts on that tire that indicate a possible puncture. But I tell you, the other thing that we have done is we've gone up and down pit road to tell all the crew chiefs to make sure and run the recommended air pressure in the right side tires, Jerry. Have you seen Kyle Petty's right front? No, we have not. They're just taking that off the car right now, and as soon as we have a chance to look at that, uh, we'll do that. Well, Stu, thanks for the update. Bob? And again, Benny, explain why a lower air pressure in the left side tire might be the best thing to do uh, under normal circumstances. Because as the car runs, they build up pressure. As the tires get hot, they start building up pressure. When they build up pressure, they stop adhering to the racetrack. So the lower you can get them and keep them together, the better they're going to adhere once you get a few laps on them. But the Goodyear engineer says don't be tempted to run too low a air pressure. Benny, what's that? What are they... What's a hot pressure that you run? What do they build up to under these circumstances? They will build up about 12 to 15 pounds above the recommended pressure. Every tire, every racetrack is a different air pressure. Here they probably run 40, 45 pounds of air in the right side. Okay, because they start their cold pressure on the right side is 35 on the right front, and the right rear is 35 as well. We're seeing some uh, pit stops being made as the halfway point comes around. We saw Mike Skinner come in just a few moments ago. Now Bill Elliott is on the uh, pit road. 
Gary Gerald is there. Watching. Routine service, it appears. It will be four tires. Again, we're seeing a lot of grass up on the front grill. Elliott moving away cleanly. Well, if they've got to put all the gas in the car, if they've got to put two, tans, two cans of gas in the car, they might as well change four tires. Halfway, 200 miles down, 200 miles to go. The halfway point has been reached, and Ernie Irvin is at the front of the field at the halfway point. And I would think that Ernie Irvin, is, now that he's won the halfway money, the $10,000 in Gatorade, he will pit the next time. There his teammate is Dale Jarrett. Dale Jarrett relinquishes his seventh position to come in for a pit stop. We see the chassis adjustment going on the right rear. Right sides are off. They're coming around to the left side. And NASCAR's allowed him out across the pit wall to clean the windshield. Work still going on, changing the tires, making sure that tank is filled with gasoline and Dale Jarrett begins to roll as Rick Mast comes in riding on board the Pennzoil Pontiac with Johnny Benson who continues to hold on to second position the man up ahead is the leader of the race Ernie Irvin and now we should be seeing pit stops from these two in fact the top three Mark Martin before too long trust me this is one place you would not want to run out of fuel especially on the front stretch you might not be able to coast back if you're running at a high bank track, you might be okay if you run out of fuel, but not on the flat surface of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Bob, here's what's going on for the leaders. They're trying to stretch. Ernie Irvin is trying to stretch as far as they can go. They wanted to go to lap 83. They've spoken to Ernie as the Miller car of Wallace comes on a pit road. They want to go and try and get four tires. Let's go to Rusty Wallace and Gary Gerald. Four tires stop for Rusty Wallace. They handle the right side in great fashion. The Penske South team and the leaders are coming in. We've got a flurry of activity all the way up and down this lengthy pit road. Wallace running in 22 seconds, Jack. And there is going to be a chassis adjustment made on your leader, Ernie Irvin. They want to come in tight because they need to make the change on the outside. Four tire change. Now the big thing is they're going to put a half a turn in in the right rear. They're going to try and give him just a little bit more bite. He hits the marks, goes to work. And for Danny Sullivan's information, there is a lot of debris on the front nose of Ernie Irvin's car. Meanwhile, Johnny Benson goes to work. One air and tire has gone away. Benson is away first. Split screen. Now they're going to make four tires stop on Ernie Irvin. Now Benson didn't make a four tire change. That's the difference, fellas. And we see the six car. Jerry Punch. Well, Mark Martin made a four tire change, Jack. Four scuffed tires, but more importantly, they made a track bar adjustment many parts. They lowered the track bar a quarter of an inch. Martin still complaining of the car being too tight. Well, Ernie Irvin, Johnny Benson, and Mark Martin went 38 laps between pit stops, Paul. Okay, now, you're part of that contest. It's time again for the Budweiser Fast Track Sweepstakes. The 200-mile leader, that car right there, Ernie Irvin. So ride Ernie Irvin down on your game card, and you could be off to the races. Cruise the next year's Brickyard 400. Stay tuned now for the 300-mile leader as we continue your chance to win. Brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. So we settle in now for the second half of this Brickyard 400. Ernie Irvin was the leader at the halfway point. However, now Johnny Benson is shown at the front of the field and Ernie Irvin in third position about five seconds back. These fellows have changed two tires every stop today, I believe. First time right sides, next time's left, and now back to right sides again. And it may be good strategy. Looks like it's working very well for Benson now. Car seems to be handling as well with used tires, right or left, as they are with new ones. Running in second position at the moment is Jimmy Spencer. He's about four seconds behind. Bill Elliott running fourth, and Jeff Burton is in the fifth position. Here comes Jimmy Spencer. There is the separation between first and second, and then Ernie Irvin, followed closely by Bill Elliott and Jeff Burton. And Jeff Burton. So Burton had a great pit stop. Back in the mix. Third, fourth, and fifth 
position. Ernie Irvin has posted five consecutive top five finishes, has himself in third at the moment. Take a look at the race recap at the conclusion of 80 laps, 200 miles, with, at the time, Ernie Irvin is the leader. That, of course, has changed. Eight of 80 laps led by Irvin. Lead changes nine. We've had three cautions, 16 laps. There are your lap leaders. After 80 laps, it's been a real fight up at the front of the field. And, of course, we're still keeping track of uh, Jeff Gordon's car, see if they're going to get him back into the fight. But Waldrop, Marlon, Kyle Petty definitely out of the run. And, again, the report on Kyle Petty is away to alert. He has pain in the neck, the knee, and the chest as he was sent over to Methodist Hospital for x-rays. We expect those x-rays to come back just any time now. And I'm sure as soon as they have them, the track medical center will let us know exactly what Kyle's condition is. But Dr. Henry Bach said he thought he was in good condition. Joe Nemechek and the crew are receiving a stop and go penalty for not having control of a tire which rolled across pit road. So Joe Nemechek will have to come in for a quick stop and go penalty. He was running in 28th position. Johnny Benson leads the Brickyard 400 at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us. Morgan Shepard up to 12th. Goodrich. Yeah, when we come back, I want to do an update on Benson. They were one of them, guys. Goodyear went to them. They went up two pounds on the tire pressure to get to the recommended pressure. And, and now it's funny because now the spotters have to talk to the drivers each corner whether they're in the dirt or not. Jimmy Spencer pit on that last round. He had to have pit it because yes, he did. Lap 81. Thank you. He must have had a great pit stop. Probably just changed two tires. Yeah. You ever, are you anywhere close to his pit? No. Okay. I'm not that far away. I can go find out. Out of a second right here. Benson continues to lead the Brickyard 400. We have had a change for second position as Ernie Irvin got by Jimmy Spencer. Irvin to second, Spencer third, as Bill Elliott and Jeff Burton continue to run in fourth and fifth. There's the interval between Benson, and here comes second place Ernie Irvin. A couple of cars in between them. Jackaroot has an update on Johnny Benson, who continues to lead. Well, guys, you heard Stu Grant, the worldwide director for Goodyear, say he's recommended with his engineers to all the crews to go up to the recommended tire pressure. That's what Johnny Benson's crew did on that last exchange of tires. They let Benson know, and instead of curing the slight tightness or the push that they had in the car, going up on the air pressure has exacerbated it. It's a little bit more pushy, but they said better safe than sorry. In the meantime, Forget about the spotters telling you whether you're clear of traffic or whether there's an accident. 
What they're doing now is playing the role of referee. Anytime a driver dips a nose down onto the grass, they get on the horn and say, you were on the grass, get off it. <laughs> well, they're serious it. about keeping off that grass, aren't they? Absolutely. And they have seemed to have cleaned up their act a little bit over here in turn two. You don't get it as regularly as you were previous to the 200 mile mark. One car that has retired from competition is Je uh, Ford Burton in car number 22, while his brother runs in fifth position. Jimmy Spencer started 20th, currently up to third. A good run for the Berwick, Pennsylvania native. Now back to Bill Elliott and Jeff Burton, and right behind Jeff is the sixth place car of Mark Martin. And there's Dave Marcus, who had gone to the garage area, is back now. And he, look at Dale Jarrett is right behind. Dale Jarrett is running this. Didn't someone say a moment ago he's fast and running the cars down by himself without the aid of a draft? Here he comes. He may be the fastest car on the racetrack. Let's check this. Yep, last lap was 168.882 for Dale Jarrett. He's the fastest man on the racetrack. That last lap was 169.8. Uh, so he's about a mile an hour faster than everybody else out there. And he's closing in quickly on Bill Elliott. And this is the same car that he smacked the wall with trying to qualify. There we see a battle for the position between Jeff Burton and Mark Martin. You see Jeff make a hand gesture out the side of the uh, car, and Mark Martin goes to the inside and picks up fifth place. That was telling Mark to go ahead. I will. I know that you're there. When you get to the corner, go on in the corner. I will not block you. There we see Dale Jarrett take the spot away from Bill Elliott. Once again, that is the car, the same car that he smacked the wall with. The crew, Todd Perry and the crew repaired it. It looks like they've done a good job. Dale Jarrett has been very consistent the last few races. Of course, he led the point standings in the early part of the year after his second win of the Daytona 500. But his recent performances have put him within 59 points of the lead in the NASCAR Winston Cup point standings. Five consecutive top five finishes. Where will he finish next week when NASCAR heads to Watkins Glen International for the running of the butt of the Glen? That's next Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. We'll be both be there. Yep. That's, of course, NASCAR's visit to its second road course of the year. They run at Sears Point in Sonoma, California, and at Watkins Glen International. Fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Let's drop back a little bit and see what's going on behind. Here comes Terry Labonte to the inside of Lake Speed. Lake still in the top ten, having a great run, but he loses a position here to Terry Labonte. Labonte goes to eighth, Lake Speed back to ninth. Lake is having a great run. So Gary Bradbury just a moment ago. He's a lap down. And for you Dale Earnhardt fans, Dale, of course, is not in the car. Mike Skinner is. Skinner is running in 26th spot. Terry Labonte, second in points, just nine behind Jeff Gordon. Here is Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, Mark Martin can't talk to his teammate, Jeff Burton, but he knows that his car owner, Jack Roush, can. So what Mark did a moment ago, he radioed Jack Roush and said, hey, tell this guy behind me, the 99, to tuck in behind me and stay with me, and we'll run him down so he's got to help me. If he helps me, it'll help us both. A little teamwork going on here. Yes. That is the wave of the future. Seems to be the wave of the future in Winston Cup racing. Two and three car teams. But Benny, the guy that's catching them both is Dale Jarrett. I keep saying he's handling awful good. He's, he looks so good through here. He just looks like he's on rail. And I'm not so sure. We've had this temperature go down at least five, if not 10 degrees over here, cloud cover. And I think the track's going to get faster as it cools down. Every afternoon about this time in the last four days, the uh, clouds have moved in, and that's the situation we have today. Here comes a very battered and beat up car of Jeff Gordon. They have the repairs made that will allow him to go onto the racetrack and make some more laps so that he can move up perhaps a couple of positions in the standings 
and some points. Jack Aroos. And Bob, this just shows you how up to speed NASCAR is. The last thing that a NASCAR official said to Jeff Gordon before he strapped himself in the car, look, make sure you stay out of the way of the leader. Obviously, he will not be up to speed, and his goal and his purpose right now is just to make complete some laps and maybe move up a couple of positions in the point standings. There's the leader of the race, Johnny Benson. And we will be back to the third annual Brickyard 400 from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway after this message and a word from our ABC station. Hey, Benny? Yes. The difference in the, in the thinking between Benson and Irvin. Irvin, Larry McReynolds felt like it's better to go for four now while you're leading than it was, and then they'll go for three, they'll go for two for the rest of the race. Exactly, yeah. In the case of Benson, though, they felt like even if they lost the lead, they want to continue that one side only for track position. Okay? I got you. I know you already knew that. Bob Goodrich, are you catching my light at all? Okay. Well, I'll tell you, we're going to have you for dinner tonight, Bob. You don't watch our lights. <laughs> He'll be chowing down on the power people. Hey, Jack. We'll have to find him there. All right. <laughs> Budweiser, the King of Beers, is proud to bring you aerial coverage of today's Brickyard 400 live from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Hovering high above the two and a half mile oval, watching Johnny Benson in the lead, and uh, Dale Jarrett maintained his fifth position, and Jeff Burton sixth. Dale Jarrett is telling his crew it's pretty hot. Water temperature, I assume he's talking about the water temperature is creeping up. Let me talk about his feet. <laughs> well, he was at one point 8.7 seconds behind, and now Jarrett is 6.8 seconds behind, so he continues to be one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. On the far right of your screen, that is Jeff Gordon. And from uh, the fastest car when the race began, and yesterday, it's a taped up uh, moving piece of metal, Benny. Yeah, that's the windshield we see going around. But why is he out there? Because if he can run just 13 more laps, he will pass both Sterling Marlin and Kyle Petty, who crashed. And by just moving up those two positions, he will pick up six points. And that could be very valuable when they pass out the checks in December at the banquet. Battle for third spot. Jimmy Spencer, the yellow car, has it. That's Mark Martin, the blue and white car. Wants it. Remember Mark Martin a moment ago passed his teammate. 
Jeff Burton. And we had a report from the fifth where he said, Doug Hall, let's go. Well, Jeff Burton right now just can't keep up with Mark Martin. And I also think that Dale Jarrett, who's running so strong, who got by him, is now seems to be holding station behind Mark. Doesn't seem to be green. And so if he is running hot, maybe he's had to back off a little bit. Right now, Ernie Irvin is gaining on the leader. We see the lead is 2.6 seconds. It was about four and a half seconds just a few laps ago. So he is gaining. Jerry, Gary Gerald? Well, Benny, we just checked with Todd Parrott to see if you how he would respond. He said, are you running hot? He grinned and he said, no, my driver is hot, but we're all right. Now, is he playing games? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty warm out there. He might be getting, and this is a fairly flat racetrack. A lot of folks around here, a lot of grandstands around here, so maybe there's not a lot of breeze in the car. They do have the window in the right side of the car. Benny, that's the one great thing about those open cockpits. You got about a 220 mile an hour breeze most of the time. <laughs> Benny, or what we see in here with Ernie catching him is the fact that he took on four tires as opposed to uh, Benson's two tires, and we're getting sort of later in the run. The tires are being scrubbed in a little bit. Is that what we're seeing here? I would believe that is the case, that right now the four tires change is starting to make a difference. three caution periods during the Brickyard 400 so far. We have been green since lap 48. Jack Aroot has more from Pitt Road. Well, Bob, I think you're absolutely right with Benny said, but here's what Larry McReynolds has told Ernie Irvin. Don't worry about using up the fuel, but make sure you try and conserve the tires. So even though they've got better rubber on one side than Johnny Benson, they want to try and conserve it. Why? Because the next time, they're only going to change two. This is a good little battle here between Jimmy Spencer and Mark Martin. Martin is all over the back end of Spencer, but just cannot make the pass. Boy, Benson just had a wiggle on there following Dick Trickle's car. He was got in there real close underneath two, got it a little bit sideways, had to back out of it. Now you can see how close it is between first and second as Ernie Irvin will go to the inside and pass Michael Waltrip. Mm. And Johnny Benson is having a tough time getting by Dick Trickle. Now he'll be able to do so out of the corner and onto the straightaway. Michael Waltrip shooting down to the inside of the racetrack as Ernie Irvin tries to tuck right in on the back bumper of the Pennzoil Pontiac. Well, here's our race recap after 100 laps. We've got 60 to go in this Brickyard 400. Did you see the, d the dust and debris that flew up as Benson went on the outside of Trickle in turn one? Oh, yeah, it's it's bad over here, too. These guys come back. We just get covered by it when they're out there running the outside groove. But look at Ernie right there. Whoa! Right up to the back part of the bumper. Well, he wants to get to the corner before Dick Trickle. He does not want to get caught on the outside like Johnny Benson did in turn one. This is a battle for the lead. Johnny Benson, with whom we're riding, is the leader of the race. Ernie Irvin is in second spot. Johnny Benson has been the top finishing rookie in 17 of 18 races this season. The only one to break that was Randy McDonald in the first race of the year at Pocono. But Benson, without question, wins the Rookie of the Year honors. Question right now is, can he pull off the first and certainly one of the biggest victories that he will ever have in his career? That would be an upset. What do you think? If Johnny Benson pulls off the Brickyard corner, that will be called an upset. That would definitely be called an upset. Not so much Ernie Irvin, because he ran so well here in the first race. And challenged Jeff Gordon right up until the closing laps with a tire let go. He was not in the race last year, recuperating from the injury suffered at Michigan. Back to sixth. Concentrating on the leader, 
And of course, that puts Dale Jarrett. He is right behind Mark Martin. But the focus of attention continues to be at the front. Look at Ernie. Got a good run off of the backstretch there into the corner. They come on to the short shoot, and Urban will look to the inside of Johnny Benson and see if he can get the lead in turn four. Not at the moment. But maybe he'll have the momentum build up down the straightaway. Here they come. Johnny Benson is having the run of his life. He's been able to handle traffic, and he's been able to handle all of this pressure mounted by the veterans of this league. Oh, Ernie's got a good run this time and takes the lead. So Ernie Irvin goes back into the lead. You got a good view of that, didn't you, Danny? I got a great view of it. You know, one thing that I like is Benson's smart. Now, Ernie's done two moves, one going into two and one going into four just like that. And Benson just kind of gives him the road and tucks back in there so he doesn't lose much ground. The lead changed on the 108th lap. Benny, I think that shows pretty smart racing on Benson's part. He knows there's a lot of racing to go. Knows Ernie's got that run on him. Plays it smart, he's still tucked right in there behind him. He is a rookie, but a very smart rookie, Danny. Here are the top 10 after 108 laps. It's Herman Benson, Martin, Jared, and Burton. Six through 10, Spencer, Elliott, Lamonti, Shepard, and Hunt Strickland. Yeah, that's correct. And we're hearing possibly 115 for uh, Jared, possible. And Martin, 117. So that means all of them are going to have to, unless we have a big yellow, they're all going to have to make another splash and I'm go, in sure. correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly right, Danny. Somebody would probably have to make it to what? What, lap 122? One, one, Gary, they'd have to go to 120 if they had any chance of making it. Well, one, 122 probably. Now, my cameraman's telling me that somebody wants us to go to Irvin. Is that correct, or do you want us to stay with Jared? We're, we're fine. We can... Okay, he's... Thank you. I'm in Martin's pit. Oh! Irvin, and, yeah. Irvin and Benson for Jack. I think Jarrett's going to go for a two-tire stop, which would set them up to be in, maybe in command for that final stop late in the race. What? Jarrett's sticking his hand out to the windshield, trying to get some air in on his car. and Dale Jarrett has just taken over third position from Mark Martin. Without question, Jarrett, the fastest man on the racetrack. And look at Dale Jarrett down the straightaway, sticking his left hand out the window of his car, trying to funnel some air in to cool off just a little bit. Here's how the pass occurred. Comes off the corner and just dives in there. Mark Martin basically gave him the road. As a matter of fact, when he got to the straightaway, Dale Jarrett waved and said, thanks, Mark. Appreciate you not holding me up. We have a Pontiac leading this race. Jimmy Spencer had his hand out the window trying to cool himself off. These guys, and the temperature, Danny, I've been told, has dropped from 89 degrees to 82. You're right. It is cooling off out there, but they're hot in the car. Benny, does that also, without any yellows or anything, when they run lap after lap, does that just build up in the car more? Yes, it does. It gets hotter and hotter and hotter. 
Air temperature 82, track temperature 112. Gary Gerald has more on Dale Jarrett's run. I tell you, Bobby, it seems to me that this race is falling exactly into the game plan for Dale Jarrett, Todd Parrott, and this crew, because I talked to him just before he got in the car this morning at the start of the race. He said, my big concern is going to be that first 20 laps or so. We want to get things strung out, and then from 24th, we want to just pick people off one at a time. So here we are approaching a pit stop at 100 and what, 13 laps. He's up to third from 24th, and he's doing exactly what he said he hoped to do, taking him one lap at a time. We think he may be in here for a two-tire stop in approximately three laps. One thing that we have to keep our mind on, however, is what Terry Labonte's crew is telling him. They think, Labonte, of course, is Chevrolet driver, that the Fords are going to run out of gas with five or six laps to go. Well, in other words, they've got to stop for a splash of gas with five or six laps to go. Gary Dehart and Terry Labonte are planning on making this race on one more stop. Uh-huh. Now, Benny, how much time do they lose going into a pit on this with that 55-mile-an-hour speed limit? That's the problem, about three-quarters of a lap. And right now, Terry Labonte is only 20 seconds behind the leader. Pretty smart strategy. I'm sorry, Bob. Sir. I was going to say 23 cars on the lead lap here with 113 laps completed. Jack Aroon once again. Well, Bob, Ernie Irvin has a little bit of a concern. Not the driver, but Joey Knuckles, who changes the, the front tires. It seems on that last stop, he thinks he cross-threaded one of the plug nuts. Now, that's going to make it difficult getting off, but if they do get it off, it could strip that lug as well. So there's a lot of furrowed brows here as they get ready to pit in about three laps. This will be a critical pit stop for a lot of drivers. There will be undoubtedly one after this, however. Here we see those cars. We're hearing Ernie Irvin and uh, Larry McReynolds having conversation regarding how many tires they're going to change during the stop. Pit stops are taking place. Bill Elliott's on pit road. Lake Speed is on pit road. Bill Elliott was in the top 10. Lake Speed had fallen back to 13th. Jimmy Spencer comes down pit road. There you see Kenny Wallace at the top of your screen coming in. But the leader of the race, Ernie Irvin, continues on. And then we see Elliott leaving pit road as Irvin goes flashing by. Here's Gary Gerald. We thought it would be two tires. It's going to be four. Jarrett, a lap and a half back, said, I want a round of bite, and I want four tires. He's already got two new good years. He's got three and four coming. Everything looking routine. He didn't got it all in 20.5 seconds. Excellent stop. That is a great pit stop for four tires. You know, one problem with Dale Jarrett, I'm sure, is having because of the heat. He was banged up in Pocono. Remember the crash he had up there? He broke a couple of ribs and broke a bone in his leg. He's not been able to exercise and stay in shape. That's the way these drivers have to do anymore to run these hot races in the summertime. I'm sure he's missing going down to the gym about two or three times a week. Dale Jarrett finished third here last year. There is the leader, Ernie Urban. Conversation continues between him and Larry McReynolds. Coming in this time. In four bud, come to your side, 4300 now. Come to your side, listen to my voice, Cecil. Guys, just concentrate, don't let them tires roll across pit road. Be focused. So Ernie Irvin is in. Joey Knuckles has gotten the right front. That was the questionable tire off. Doesn't seem to be a problem there. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. You're back racing now, Ernie. 4,300, 4,300. Remember, you got two right side cold tires. There you go. You heard Larry McRae.
Dick Reynolds trying to take his driver back out into the racetrack. 4,300 representing the RPM that that car should be at. None above that because that would represent possibly a violation of the speed limit. Exactly. Rusty Wallace is in, giving up his eighth position as we watch Ernie Irvin get back up to speed on the warm-up lane, joining the racetrack at the backstretch. And they waited to put fuel in. Here comes Mark Martin, the second place car in. Dr. Jerry Punch, he's headed toward you. Mark Martin gives up second spot. to make at least one more stop. They cannot make it the rest of the way, Bob. He'll have to stop with nine laps left. The problem they're having here is Mark's car just stays too tight. One round, two rounds, three rounds out of the right rear. They are trying to loosen the car up, and as you know, a tight race car means you've got to slow down entering and exiting the corners. Four scuff tires, full of fuel, three rounds out, and he is out of the way in 19.6 six seconds. Excellent pit stop. tires and only two impact wrenches last year at the brickyard these teams could use three guns now they can only use two well johnny benson is a leader jack Aroot. but he's going to be coming on the pit road they were trying to stretch as very long as they could to make this on one more stop but he just reported a fluctuation in johnny benson's fuel pressure gauge he said i'm coming to pit road guys we don't want to chance it any longer his crew chief said 10-4 him enter turn number three. Jeff Burton passed him there in the back stretch. Burton has already been in for his pit stop. So here goes Benson into the pits. He relinquishes the lead to Jerry Labonte. Comes off the corner at almost full speed, but has to get it slowed down to 55. Jack Aroot called the stop of Johnny Benson. Well, there was a lot of talk on whether to go with right sides only or take four all the way around. Ernie Irvin made that call by taking only one side, the right side. So now Johnny Benson is going to do likewise. It looks like a round going in on the left side, cleaning the front end of the car. The work is completed. Now they call the fuel in 11.2 seconds. They hope they've got enough now to go the distance and come home in front. Well, it's going to be very interesting to see if he can go the distance. Here comes Ernie Irvin at full speed into turn one. And there goes Benson on the pit road. So these cars are going to be close when they get to the backstretch. Benson is still on the warm-up lane. Here comes Irvin at full speed. He goes by Benson. Of course, you can't run at full speed on that warm-up lane, but there is no speed limit. At the moment, Terry Labonte has picked up the lead of this race, but he needs a pit stop before too long. Well, we've set up now for what could be the final run, although some cars are going to have to make a pit stop before the end of this Brickyard 400 at Indianapolis, Indiana. Labonte is coming on this lap. Yep. Okay, and, and obviously their strategy, they've got 120. They're hoping that they can go the rest of the way. Well, it says Ricky Rudd, but uh, I don't think he's pitted yet. For all practical purposes, Rudd is, or uh, Irvin is the leader. No, he's talking about the Budweiser thing. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll have to find out. I think it was Terry Labonte. Now it was Benson. Was it Benson? Was it Benson? Yep. He came in the pit south of the line. Pit position is what got it. He came in the pit south of the line. Bob Goodrich, you hear my mic okay? Mic check, one, two. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check. You said it was fluctuating here in the pit stop. My level was coming on. I, I could not hear the, the radio communication between Urban and Bruce. I had nothing in my headset. That's because, Jerry, that's because they don't have it in our headset. We can't hear it.
We're back at the Brickyard 400. You're taking a look at Johnny Benson. He's currently in second place, but on your game cards, it's time for the Budweiser Fast Track Sweepstakes. The 300-mile leader was Johnny Benson. So write down Johnny Benson on your game card. You can take it to the checkered flag for a race fantasy. You could win a trip for two to the Brickyard 400 in 1997. Stay tuned for the final lap and your chance to win. Brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. Well, Johnny Benson, of course, after that mark, dropped back into second place behind Ernie Irvin. And the yellows just flashed on. And the report is that we have debris on the track. So it will slow the race and bring Benson right up behind Ernie Irvin. There's your 120 lap race recap. Johnny Benson has been a power in this race and, of course, now sits in second place. Now we'll see all the cars coming back in. And they'll put gasoline in to put four tires on and they'll be good to go to the end we no longer have the scenario of some being able to make it and some not because this yellow flag assures everyone will be able to have enough fuel to go the distance and there we see the debris that we're talking about looks like a tire oh, it looks like a big chunk of tire right down toward the turn one area of the racetrack the debris brings the yellow out and so the field slows. We expect everybody in for a stop. We'll return to the Brickyard 400 after this message and a word from our ABC station. And by the way, uh, Jeff Gordon just pulled behind the wall, and he did so because of what I explained earlier in the race. He completed enough laps to move up two positions. Gain six points. Yeah, we'll do. He cannot move up anymore. Good. Yep. 30, he's 38 laps behind. Uh, no. It's not right. Yeah, but he's running so slow that. Where the heck are you going? <laughs> what? Don't be gone long. <laughs> Not bad at all. Okay. Here they come. Dale Jones took on four tires the last time. <coughs> Mark Martin, four. Johnny Rubin, two. Johnny Benson, two. Under caution, the cars come in to top off and possibly change tires. This was just a moment ago. Ernie Irvin on the top of your screen, Johnny Benson on the bottom. Remember, they changed right sides on the green flag stop just a moment ago. Now the left side. So go, go, go. Hurry, hurry. And they beat Benson out. But look, Dale Jarrett is the first car out. And then Ernie. There comes Morgan Shepard. Rusty Wallace has a great pit stop. And Johnny Benson is fired back in about 10th spot. 
Johnny Benson lost a lot of track position during that pit stop, and it may be difficult for him to gain it in these last few laps. Now, the question is, is Terry Labonte going to pit this time? Right now, he's the leader of the race. There he is the second car, the yellow car. He might have, he probably has enough fuel. No, I'm sorry, that's Greg Sachs. Labonte is back in the Kellogg's car, someplace back. He probably has enough fuel to finish the race he might not come in Gary Gerald is he going to pit well Benny I, we just moved away from that pit but just as that yellow came out I had just talked to Rick Hendrick and I said are you prepared to go all the way and he says that's our plan that was with 39 laps to go and I said and you're hoping that the Fords have to make a late stop and he smiled and said exactly then the yellow came which may have negated all that strategy because the Fords have come in and topped off Labonte is staying on the track Jarrett's crew made no changes. They just topped off the fuel while some of the other leaders were making changes in the handling. That's why Dale got a jump and gained a couple of positions coming out of here on this yellow. So Terry Labonte is the leader of the race. And we'll see if he can hold off the challenge of the others. This may be very smart pit strategy on the part of Terry Labonte, who has taken over the lead of the race and is second in the point standings going in. Terry Labonte becomes the 12th different leader of this race. There were 11 different leaders last year and 13 different leaders in 1994. Well, next Sunday, the IndyCar Series heads to the road course at Mid-Ohio. Two-time winner and defending champion Allen Jr. challenges the field at the Miller 200. That's next Sunday at 3 Eastern, 2 Central and Pacific here on ABC Sports. Now, Mike Skinner, of course, took over the driving chores for Dale Earnhardt early in the race. Mike Skinner, the Craftsman Truck Series champion, has moved to 17th position, a very respectable run for the young man. When he got in and replaced Earnhardt, he had to start last literally started in 40th place and he's now in 17th so Skinner is having a very very good run and Jeff Gordon did complete the laps necessary to move up two positions he's going to finish 37th in his third Brickyard 400 back in a moment yes yes Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, Bobby, I can, I can, uh, I can talk to Childress. Let him give us a report card on Skinner. What do you think he's done? Okay. About half a race control was down there. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> he had a little. At the moment. No, he stopped. No, no, he stopped. Right, he stopped. Yep. He just, he yep. just got out quick, and uh, he's, he's had a great race. He keeps sticking that Remington out the side and telling people, let me by. <laughs> <laughs> There's Dale Jerry with his hand out the window again. Good. Oh, that's good. Dale would actually move up a position. Oh, I see. Okay. The number on the right is where they're, okay. Wait a minute. What does that mean? Uh, and I'm with Childress, uh, Bobby. God, it's so noisy. I'm so tired. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you are done, Jack. So noisy. I'm so fatigued. That points as of now. What, what's the number on the right indicate? That's the position That's, they're in. No, no. Jeff Gordon is in fourth position. He would, he drop, would drop to fourth position. Yeah. So Dale Earnhardt would move up a spot in the points. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Coolness. Okay. Great. Coolness. And Sterling Marlin would go all the way back to 10th. Wow. Nice. Nice. Good plan in there. Good red yes. setup, baby. Uh, you demand. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the electrical gremlin. Hey, he Bobby, did not pit. He did not pit. Hey, Bobby, interesting story. They've been holding the reins oh, yeah, on yeah. Skinner. They're going to turn him loose in a few minutes. I'll get Childers to tell us what they're going to do. Got it. Aerial 
facilities provided by Budweiser, the king of beers, proud to be a sponsor of the Brickyard 400. And we are about to go back to green flag racing. The green will come out on lap number 130. We will have 30 laps to go. Terry Labonte, who did not make a pit stop, is the leader of the race. Ricky Rudd is running second. Ricky Rudd also did not pit on this caution flag. He had just pitted and put his gas in the car, and he is trying to get by Labonte. So some, some drivers that we have not seen run up front have played some very smart strategy regarding pit stops. Now the question is, can they stay at the front, or can the drivers that we have seen running up at the top, including Mark Martin and Ernie Irvin and Johnny Benson make a charge. And Dale Jarrett. Your Jarrett is the car that's been up front predominantly today, is in third spot, goes by Bobby Labonte, and takes off after Ricky Rudd and Terry Labonte. Meanwhile, there comes Ernie Irvin. He is now the fourth place car. We are set up for a terrific finish here at the Brickyard 400. Number 130 has been completed. Morgan Shepard has had a great run here today. He's moved up to sixth position, and he was at the back of the field when this thing began, but he has steadily moved up. He entered the top 10 a while ago, and now is up to sixth place. Good run from Morgan Shepard. He told me his car has been practicing and running great. Goes to qualify for some reason, it will not run. Hence, he started 38. He finished 10th in the first race. He finished 10th last year. So if he keeps up this pace, he'll have his best finish ever at the Brickyard 400. And he's closing in, it appears, on Mark Martin. Looks that way. Fifth, yeah. Here comes the line down the long main straightaway. Dale Jarrett has been able to get by Ricky Rudd. Is now in second place. That's the blue car, Rudd, the orange car. Terry Labonte is the first car and the leader. Neil Jarrett has won twice this year. Here is Ernie Irvin. Danny, these guys are going for it now, aren't they? I'm telling you over here, it's getting a lot dirtier, too. They're running through here. The Dyson that's going on is fantastic. Irvin looking to the inside of Rudd there in the third corner. And here he comes. He makes the pass. Ernie Irvin up to third now. When a car makes a complete pass, the spotter will tell the driver clear, indicating that he can move up into the racing line. Here comes Mark Martin now. He's passing the lap car of Dick Trickle. Morgan Shepard, however, is right there with him. There's the leader on the left, Terry Labonte. Kellogg. George Bonnie Garrett, Dale Jarrett in second place. His teammate, Ernie Irvin. Allen Carr is in third. Two Robert Yates cars running second and third. The leader, Rick Hendrick's car, or the leader, Terry Labonte's car, is owned by Rick Hendrick. Jeff Gordon, the other member of this team, or another member of the team, is 37th. And Ken Schrader is 19th. Gary Carroll. There's leaders flashing by us, Benny. It looked like about three car lengths between Labonte and Jarrett. Jarrett's crew, we are told, telling him on the radio, they still believe Labonte is going to have to stop. That's not the feeling in the Labonte camp. So we play out the strategy here. Will the gamble pay off for Terry Labonte? One short track win this season, five second place finishes, looking for big bucks and glory right now with less than 30 to go. Well, for quite a while now, it's been the Labonte team that's saying everybody else is going to have to stop, not us. And uh, They all stopped and got a splash of gas on this caution. He did not. He stayed out because they said, we can make it. Can he make it? We'll find out shortly. <laughs> the leaders just turned their fastest laps of the race. Labonte at 170.5, Garrett at 170.7. So they are flying. That's about three miles an hour up from what they were just a bit ago. Danny, Ernie Irvin just cracked one at 171. 
Go ahead, Danny Sullivan. Yeah, but does, don't we want to see Benny? Don't we want to see Jared in the front? Doesn't he? Wouldn't he feel more comfortable out there in the front than that? clear air and let the battle go on behind him? Oh, of course he would. He wants desperately to get by because it's so difficult to pass. Right now, Labonte is pushing so much air that it makes Dale Jarrett's car push. He needs, while his tires are cool, he needs to get by. And right now, he may have it here. Oh, he got a good run off that corner. They're in the short shoot now in the fourth corner, and Dale Jarrett takes the lead of the Brickyard 400. Great pass in there. That was a nice pass. It was a great pass. And Jerry Labonte is going to hang on to this Jarrett all he can. Looks like he's going to try to make a move going in one. 25 laps to go. Ernie Irvin gets the tires down in the grass in turn one, and he puts pressure on Terry Labonte. Listen for any transmission, radio transmission between Ernie Irvin and Larry McReynolds. Here he comes. He's, He's got to run. He's got to run, Benny. Down the front stretch, and Ernie Irvin moves into second spot. And it becomes a battle of the Robert Yates cars. Dale Jarrett, the leader, and Ernie Irvin running second. Just three weeks ago, Loudon, New Hampshire, it was Ernie Irvin in front and Dale Jarrett finished in second. So Robert Yates, this would not be the first time his car has finished first and second, but it would be reversed from Loudon. If it, were to, if, if it were to end this way. It's not over yet. Dale Jarrett becomes the 13th different leader of the race. That ties the number we had in 94, and it's the first time that Dale Jarrett has ever led at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Laps winding down. Dale Jarrett, the leader, back after these messages. Bobby, when you get to it, I can still update children. Hey, Jack, where are you? I'm in Ernie Urban. What Gordon's early lap. Gary, I'm on my way back to Jarrett. Well, fastest I fastest just fastest. left Labonte. Okay, maybe I can move to Labonte in a minute after I finish with Childress. Hmm? That'd be okay? his teammate and taking the lead from the Brickyard 400. It's Ernie Irvin now in front, Jarrett second, but don't count out Terry Labonte, who's hanging with him. And Mark Martin as well. That fourth car is Mark Martin. Here's how it occurred. Front of you, Danny. Yeah, Ernie seems to be working very good down tight. He's very low down there. He can run lower than everybody else. Just got underneath him, kept his foot in the throttle, had a run off the corner. Down the back straight, he had him. A remarkable comeback by Ernie Irvin, and he capped it off by winning at Loudoun, New Hampshire a few weeks ago, but certainly this would be an even more important victory for him should he drive to victory lane here in the next few laps. And victory lane is being prepared in front of the master control tower here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. 
140 laps are about to be completed. 20 to go. Ernie Irvin begins to pull away a little bit from Dale Jarrett. Yes, he's already put three or four car lengths. 20 to go. Terry Vick needs some help out of spotters all we can. So often, Benny, in Formula One racing especially, you'll hear about team orders as one driver is told to let his teammate go by. There are no team orders in this kind of racing. I wouldn't think so. I would think the team orders don't wreck. I mean, don't price <laughs> each other trying to get by, but I don't think that Robert Yates really is concerned about which car wins. Dale Jarrett certainly is closer to a possible Winston Cup championship, being fourth in the points and only 59 behind. And Ernie Irvin is not uh, is in the top 10. He is 443 points behind the leader. Benny, a question to you. I was noticing his car seems to be what we call in, in open wheel rates and very neutral, almost to the point of being a little bit where it wants to be loose. Is that going to play a factor later on? Will, will it go more that direction, or, or what will happen? Normally they do. Normally they do get a little bit looser as the time goes on, but there's just 19 laps to go. Maybe. Now, can he get by Ricky Craven? Yes, he can. Now, Carl Craven stays up. It also allowed Dale Jarrett to close up a little bit passing that car. But yet the cars have a tendency to get looser and looser as the road as the run goes on. Here comes Terry Labonte moving to the inside of Ricky Craven, and Craven pulled to the inside to allow Mark Martin to go ahead. And so it continues to be a battle of teammates up front, just a car link separating Urban and Dale Jarrett with less than 20 laps to go. Morgan Shepard is in fifth spot. That's Tom Pear telling his guy, you can get him, you can get him. Sunday, August 18th, the Indy Racing League kicks off their 96-97 season. Indy 500 winner Buddy Lazier and the drivers of the IRL head to New Hampshire for the True Value 200 Sunday, August 18th. And Ernie Irvin, the leader of the race, and he's gotten there by driving incredibly hard this last segment. He has the fast of the race at 171.3 miles an hour. Morgan Shepard, currently fifth, is the second quickest, and he's done it at approximately the same time about eight laps ago at 171.2. 23 cars on the lead lap the top two separated by just a couple of tenths we're going to stay with it now and bring you the remaining laps of the Brickyard 400 with no commercial interruption only five cars have dropped out of this race including Jeff Gordon who'll finish 37 Bob Dale Jarrett must like starting from a long way back Last year he started 26 and finished third. This year he started 24th and he's now running second and challenging for the lead. He probably would prefer to start up front, but you're right. He has been able to come from deep in the pack. Dale Jarrett has won twice this year in NASCAR Winston Cup go, competition. 16 to go, babe. He won the Daytona 500. He won at Charlotte. Boy, he said he called, didn't he? <laughs> he sure did. I tell you what, though, Benny, over here, they're not driving these things calm. They're sliding them through here, and they're really working them, trying to get as much out of them as they can. We've received just some uh, real unofficial news that uh, Kyle Petty has been released from the hospital and will be making his way back here to the racetrack. So that is good news if indeed we can confirm it. But we do know that Kyle Petty was not seriously injured in that what appeared to be very serious crash early on in the Brickyard. That is what I was doing because he hit the wall hard about three times. We watch the battle for one of the field. Don't forget the Morgan Shepherd started back in 38th position. And Morgan is now running up in fifth. Johnny. He didn't even answer him that time. His hands are full. <laughs> yeah. Got his teammate back there. Oh, I, I just, folks, I can't tell you how those drivers are feeling right now. All five of those guys wanted to win this race so badly. You know, 
That's why they do it. That's exactly why race car drivers are race car drivers. It's not the money. It's this moment in time. I'd update you on Johnny Benson, who was so strong earlier in the race, led many, many laps. He's dropped back to eighth position, about nine seconds behind these top two. Bob, that pit stop really hurt him, and he got back here in the traffic, and he's been fighting his way through it the whole time he was coming off here, sometimes three and four abreast down the back straightaway. You're absolutely right. So many times you'll hear Benny and the rest of us talk about how important track position, and we saw that in the pit stop when several cars got out ahead of Johnny Benson, picked up the track position, and Johnny has not been able to pick up as much on the racetrack. However, he will earn the bonus for most laps led today, Johnny Benson will, with 68. Jerry Punch has an update on Labonte. Well, Terry's crew chief, Gary Dehar, keeps looking up at the sky. No, we're not worried about rain. What he wants is clouds. Every time the clouds come across the sun and it cools off, Labonte is able to taper in somewhat on the HP Mace of Urban and Jarrett back upstairs. Well, Dale Jarrett is sure making an effort to get into the front, isn't he? Well, he is. I thought he was going to make a move just a moment ago. I mean, <laughs> Jerry Labonte isn't going any place. Right now, the sun is out. Jerry Punch says that he needs cooler racetrack to run better. But now there's bright sunshine on the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Dale Jarrett is going to try every corner, every lap to get by this one, hoping that Ernie Irvin might miss the corner just a little bit one time, and if he does, he'll be there. He's got a run on him coming off the two. He was right there. He looked like he was really hooked up, but I don't think he's got enough. Ernie Irvin was in this identical spot two years ago in 1994 battling with Jeff Gordon. But you know what happened in the closing laps? The tire went down and Ernie Irvin lost the race. Will it happen again? Will Dale Jarrett be able to pass him? Stay tuned, we've only got about 12 laps to go. Skinner in replace in uh, relief of Dale Earnhardt. Benny, you talked earlier in the program about how important it is to hit that very narrow entrance to the corner every time you go around this place. Now, these guys have been out there and turning left four times per lap for the last 148 laps. And Dale is just waiting on Ernie to make that one little slip that is going to give him the advantage. That's right. He, and that's, how, that's why he's so close. He wants to be there because it's only instant. It's only happened for one instant, and he has to be there to take advantage of it. Ernie Irvin has been to victory lane 13 times in his NASCAR Winston Cup career. under a toolbox somewhere back there. There we see Morgan Shepard has caught Mark Martin out of the four spot. Meanwhile, back up front. And the pursuit continues. Dale Jarrett locked on the go, back bud. bumper. In the go, the only way he can get you is if he gets under you. Be smart, be smooth. Good advice there from Larry McReynolds saying the only way he can pass you is to allow him to get under you, and Dale is trying to do that very thing. He is trying. Look at that. Did Ernie get a little sideways coming off that corner, Danny? He sure looked like a little bit. He was moving the car, but I couldn't tell whether it was actually sideways or just trying to look in his mirrors and block Dale. Something happened to get Dale Jarrett off the throttle because we see he lost a car link to Ernie Irvin in that short shoot. But he closes up once again as he is in the north short shoot now. I tell you what, Terry Labonte is not going away. He's hanging back there about a second behind these two cars. He's about a second behind. Time to go, time to go, spotters. That 29 car is up there. We don't need him nowhere near us. 
That's down to eight. Go down the 29 spot. So tell them that we're coming. Get out of the way. Give us the racetrack. 29 car, of course, is Greg Sachs. Nine laps to go. Benny, when they give them or ask for that, well, are they pretty good about it? Will they tell the 29 car to move? Yes. Yes, they normally, the spotter for the 29 car will say, look, we've got the leaders coming, so be sure and don't get in the way. Ever see Robert Yates? <laughs> He's biting the lip. <laughs> Watching his two drivers run first and second. That's Larry McReynolds right behind him. Crew chief for the 28 car. Hey, as nervous as he's got to be, it's got to be a great feeling, though, having your cars run one, two like this from the Brickyard 400. Eight to go. Just be smooth. Almost every lap, the word is be smooth. to make the move and pull back behind Ernie Irvin. Oh, and that's a car Kenny in the wall. That's it. Looks like he's blowing up. I don't know if he's hit the wall or not. He's down on the apron. He's I, think he just, I think he just blew up. No contact. Car just showing a lot of smoke. Will we go caution? No indication yet. The leaders come by. The green remains out. Benny, I don't know. because he had the smoke coming out of Oh, here we go. For the lead. For the lead. Jared goes to the inside in the second corner and comes out with the lead. That was a little high. I think I can get him back by. 10-4, bud. 10-4. Just be smooth. Six to go when you get back. Six yeah, Ernie, Ernie knew exactly what he did. He got high coming off the corner, had to catch it, lost the momentum. Jared took advantage of it into the lead. But you heard Ernie say, I think I can get him back. But I don't know. Jarrett lengthens the lead by one, two, three, four car lengths now off of four. Six to go. Six to go. to the inside of the back stretch. Now there's Greg Sachs, who will do likewise, not impeding the progress of either Jarrett or Irvin. Jarrett is closed back in. I mean, Irvin is closed back in. Looks like they're all still here. Every single person is still here, and most of them are standing. I'll tell you, over here in turn two, there's nobody sitting down. They're all standing up watching this one. Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Jared getting the left side tires down to the grass once again there in the first turn. Nice clean line above the uh, white line over in two. Ernie was in the dirt a little bit that time. He threw up a pretty good plume of smoke. Ricky Craven just blew, took his garage, garage his car to the garage here. Too excited right now about to talk. He's running out of laps. Yes, he is. 156 complete.
157th lap. Dale Jarrett can't rush the wall. He can't make any slip. He does. He will be passed. second every time so if Ernie Irvin is going to pass Dale Jarrett he is going to have to find something that he has not displayed the last four or five laps there's Brad Bodine directly in front of him now if they can get by him on the straightaway and not impede the progress they should be okay he's moving over Jarrett moves over to get a little draft off of him and Brad Bodine backs off lest both cars have the corner the last car on the lead lap. Guys, they're over here. When they come through two, turn two, they're driving these things for everything they're worth. I mean, they're sliding inside out, looking in the dirt. It is fantastic. The crowd on its feet. In two more laps, they'll know who wins the Brickyard 400. Everyone standing, cheering. Taking a later entry, I think that's a better way to go. We got a little crash. Robert Presley has crashed at the north end of the racetrack at the entrance to Pit Road. And the caution comes out. We're going to end this event under caution, it would appear. This will be the race to the flag, really, determining the winner. Dale Jarrett is coming through corner number three. Here he comes. Corner four. The caution flag waves, but there's just one more lap to go. And Dale Jarrett is going to win it. Dale Jarrett Dale has job, won Dale. the Dale. Brickyard 400. Although we've got one Our more guys, lap to go. Ernie apologized to crew, said it'll let you down. There's the pace car. Sorry, Bob. Bad that it had to end this way. We would like to have seen one more lap of competition, but that's not the way it happened today because of Robert Presley who crashed up uh, off of corner number four. Larry McReynolds, crew chief on the 28 car, is running up toward the Dale Jarrett pit. As the pace car has picked up the field. There he is. Congratulations, Todd Parrott. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and Robert Yates is the owner of the two cars that finished first and second. The race, of course, is not over yet because we have seen stranger things happen. Mark Martin uh, pulled into the uh, pit area on the white flag lap under caution so dale jarrett will have to come down and receive the checkered flag but he's going to be the winner so did uh Hale yarborough at daytona remember when he and richard petty raced back to the line to the caution flag and richard won the race well kale quit but there's another lap to go well dale understands there's another lap to go pace car leads them off the board as the track crew is there at the robert presley car that crashed off the corner slowly as the Camaro pace car leads them down. The checkered flag is waving and now it is official. Well, Kale Jarrett has won the third Brickyard 400 under caution. And for Dale Jarrett it is his, it is his seventh NASCAR Winston Cup career win. will return to the Brickyard 400 after this message and a word from our ABC station. The backup mic in here is the Benny mic. I'm supposed there to tell go. audio that. Yeah. <clears throat> I wasn't wow. 
I'm watching now. What happened? Just lost it back in, coming off the corner. Mm -hmm. Hey, Benny, they actually got on the radio and told, reminded Dale to stay out. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. Wins the big ones, doesn't he? I'm telling you. back here Bobby I'm almost there I'm, I'm back here Bobby if we end up having to feel Jarrett's piece remember in saying my dream is to win the Brickyard 400 so hey Jack yeah Benny if he wins the Mountain Dew Southern 500 he wins a million dollars I know yep okay. Parrot told call. him on the radio right. Jack on the last lap you deserved it buddy you drove your butt off yeah I heard it Got a good spotter too. Who was third? Was Labonte end up third? Yeah. Yes. That's where we're headed then, right? Martin Shepard. Yeah, we're back here. This is it, your last chance to win. The winner of the Brickyard 400 is Dale Jarrett. So write Dale Jarrett on your Budweiser Fast Track Sweepstake game card and send it in. You could race off to next year's Brickyard 400. We want to thank you for playing. Remember to send in your game card. Brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. No purchase necessary. Must be 21 or older to enter. See official rules for details. This bud for race fans. And this man is for winner's circle at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Dale Jarrett very definitely knows how to win the ones with the big crowds and the big money. Let's go down now. Jack Arood is right there with him. And, Paul, you know, there was a time when this young man thought he might like to play on the PGA Tour. That was before he became a winner of the Brickyard 400, before he won yeah, the Daytona yeah. 500, before he won at Michigan International Speedway, literally before he decided that his dream should be to wheel a Winston Cup stock car. Getting the congratulations of his crew, it was hot inside this car, Water. and it's the first time in Brickyard 400 history that he, a Ford has found its way to victory lane. Pretty soon he's going to be getting out of the car to over 300,000 people's applause. And he is going to do the tap dance on the roof. DJ. You know, he said this was his dream, to win at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in the Brickyard 400. Dale, getting the congratulations here. No question, a great victory, but tell us about the pass. Well, the car was great all day long. I was a little bit tight, and I saw Ernie was getting tighter, too. I knew that was going to be a place I could make my move. He got in a little bit hard and a little bit high, and I saw an opportunity to get by him, and I just took it, and uh, the car worked a lot better out front. Boy, what a feeling. This is just fantastic. You know, we were saying it was always your dream, as we look at the video of that pass, it was always your dream to win here at Indianapolis. Now that you fulfilled your dream, the high coming here and going so well, then crashing during qualifying and still making in the top 25, now making the victory lane. Describe the emotions. Not sure I can right now. This, I mean, you've always watched races at Indy, and now to have the opportunity to be right here in victory lane, such a tremendous feeling. This is just such a great place. I want to thank God for a safe race here, for giving me the abilities that he has. 
and for saving a lot of people out there, including myself. So uh, thank you. Thank my dad. How about your dad? You know, he gets so emotional about these things. What do you think he's thinking right now? That I won't be calling to borrow any money for a while, maybe? <laughs> uh, I'm sure he's just elated. You know, that, what a year to win the Daytona 500, the Coca-Cola 600, and the Brickyard 400. And hey, now you get to go Labor Day, and you got a shot at $1 million. Can't wait. That's the next thing on the, on the agenda is to win that million dollars and then win the Winston Cup Championship. Well, there's a special presentation right now by the president of the Indianapolis Motor <laughs> Tony George is going to present you with the PPG trophy, and that is so very important as far as your dream is concerned. The brick, well, actually, you, you aren't gonna believe this, guys. The brick is being handed around like the Stanley Cup to the crew, but here you go, Tony, for the presentation. Dale, congratulations to you and the Everyone at Yates, and it's a, just an exciting day for Ford, and, and I didn't think we'd ever get the trophy over here, but it's well deserved. Thank, Thank you. you very much. What a terrific day. This is just fantastic. Come in here, Kelly. Is wife Kelly coming in? Now, there's the kiss. Now, we're going to give you a shot of your dad. We've got a shot of your dad. You want to say anything to him? Just wave to him right in there. Hi, Dad. Thanks for everything, and got to say hi to my kids, Natalie and Carson, Zachary, Jason. Uh, we'll be back home to celebrate pretty soon. Horse Eisenhower, John Irvin, thanks for helping me get here. Thanks, guys. Hey, let's go back to the tower. And met Jared, his dad, sitting up in the radio network booth at Indianapolis Motor Speedway Radio Network. Coming up next, 12 identical Firebirds make history. They run under the lights at Charlotte. The International Race of Champions next here on ABC. But we've got a lot more from Indy. Body? I got Perry, Jack. Okay. How about Johnny Benson? I don't know where he ended up. Benson led the most Yeah, laps. okay. We'll try and find him. And what about Mike Skinner? Benson's car is right behind Labani in the fuel tech line, Jack. Skinner got back up to 15th. I'm about winning it at Indianapolis. I dream about winning it at Indianapolis, winning the Brickyard 400. That's, that's what I want on my resume, that you know, I've won two Daytona 500, that's great. Oh, it's but beautiful. The history of this place How about is, that, huh? That's great. That's oh, good. That's great. great. That's <laughs> great, guys. Okay. <laughs> you want him to Here we go. shut up, huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Are you having a tough day, Bob? Well, putting, which is it? Putting up a seven on us would make anybody have a bad day. No. <laughs> 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 it's enough that we about sit here and it, listen it to Indianapolis, one of you. Winning the Brickyard 400. That's that's what I want on my. Back at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the third annual Brickyard 400 is history. Dale Jarrett and Victor Lane, his teammate Ernie Irvin, a whale of a run, finishes second. And Ernie, you and Dale just had it had a battle to the last lap. Oh, we did. I mean, it was a great battle, and, you know, it, it's great that, you know, our ra our team can actually come first and second. And, uh, I guess uh, the last time we did that, it, I, was, I won the race, so uh, I guess I did it the wrong time. Well, turnabout's fair play. Tell us about seven laps to go. Dale made a move inside of turn two to get by you. Yeah, I got up in the marbles in uh, turn one, and, you know, it just washed up and just about hit the fence, and Dale got on by me. And, you know, I thought I could get him back, and... Yeah, he was real good in three and four, and I was real good in one and two, so we, we were pretty much the same speed. 
Ernie, you got to think about how far you've come. I mean, we talked about at the beginning of the show a couple of years ago. They said a 10% chance of living. You've come back to Indianapolis and nearly won this thing, finishing second. I mean, that is a huge leap. Well, I tell you, you know, this is this is a lot more heartbreaking than getting a flat tire that we had like two years ago. You know, we really figured we could come back here and and, and have a good race, and we did. Just uh, fell a little bit short. Well, the voice is quivering, the eyes are moist, and Ernie Irvin sits here finishing second to his teammate. He's happy for Dale, but boy, would he have ever loved to have this one. Now, the race that belonged to Chevrolet the first two years, now it's Ford Ford up on the top of the order. As we look at the unofficial results, I don't think there's any question with Dale Jarrett taking the win, and we'll give you the run all the way down here. Race was not a record. The record was still 155 miles an hour set last year by Dale Earnhardt. It is the furthest back that a winner of the Brickyard 400 has ever, ever started because he started way back in 24th. And if you want to do the track history, well, the furthest back a winner has started at the Speedway since Johnny Rutherford started 25th in the 1974 500-mile race. And the first time teammates have finished 1-2 at Indy since 62, Ward and Sutton. We'll be back with more from Indy. That was nice. I like that. <laughs> Ward and Sutton. My favorite race. <laughs> They're, they're calling for him. And, and Bobby, Bobby, I'm with Morgan Shepard, too, over here. <coughs> Where's the commercial? Fence and most left, right? If we yeah. want to walk that way, go towards the gap. Because we've got... Remember when Sutton pulled in and said that his throttle fell off as he crossed the line, but it was only designed to go 500 miles? Ward <laughs> <laughs> and Sutton. He was counting me, and I just, I had to force that. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> the only thing that would have made me happier if you'd have somehow been able to work Jerry Hoyt into the, <laughs> <laughs> the mix. <laughs> well, I hope I don't miss my airplane. That's, that's now my next. Oh, turn. don't worry about it. Yeah. Benny, you could spend a lovely weekend here in the Hoosier Capital. Yes. No, we got him. We're gonna we're gonna walk with him because he's going to the media center. Yeah, one question, right? No problem. Okay. Yeah, no question. Right. Yes. This is correct. <laughs> Age. Okay. Back in the tech area, Terry Labonte patiently waiting his car about to clear tech, a third place drive today. The Fords gave you so much, and yet your crew gambled, got you in a spot where it looked like you might have a shot for a win. I tell you, we, we kind of gambled there on the fuel mileage deal, stayed out later that one stop. We had enough fuel to go the rest of the way. We didn't think a lot of the guys did. Then we caught the caution. It didn't really hurt us because we'd pitted for four tires anyway, so we were, it put us in the lead, but uh, we couldn't hold off the 88 and 28. They were just a little too strong for us today. What was your goal coming into this race? Well, I tell you what, this we've never finished in the top 10 before uh, here at Indy, and so we wanted a top 10, and I'm tickled with the third. You got a top 10, and you also got the championship lead back. Congratulations. Thank you. Terry? Jack? Well, if want for that last pit stop, you might have been in victory lane, Johnny Benson. Well, I don't know. Yeah, them guys were pretty tough, and uh, we had a great day all day. I'm at the Penzo Pontiac, ran great. 
to be able to lead and then lead the most laps our first time here, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm way excited about that. Paul Page, not bad for a rookie driver. He sure had a great day. Johnny Benson is to be complimented for some excellent driving. Well, we'll take a look at the race recap here with Dale Jarrett taking the win. Led 11 of the 160, but you only have to lead that final one. In this case, all you had to do was make to the white and yellow flag, and you were the winner. But what a great battle it was between Ernie Irvin and Dale Jarrett at the end of the race as we took the take a look at the recap of the race leaders. Good news here today is despite what looked to be a very serious accident, Kyle Petty is apparently okay. He's been released from the hospital. It's unofficial. We understand he's already on his way back to the track. And uh, Robert Pesley, well, he has an interesting honor. He caused the first yellow and the last yellow, the one that ended the race and made the race for Dale Jarrett. Ernie Irvin, still, you have to consider what a terrific job he did in the run here today. We want to thank you all from Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Don't forget the National Race of Champions is coming up next, and that's a historic race and one that you will not want to miss. So 39-year-old Dale Jarrett from Hickory, North Carolina has won the third Brickyard 400. He's in winner circle, and right now he is living his dream. I dream about winning it at Indianapolis, winning the Brickyard 400. That's, that's what I want on my resume, that you know, I've won two Daytona 500, that's great, but the history of this place is just more than we can really comprehend. And for me to say that I've won the Brickyard 400 uh, is what I dream about right now. And hopefully that's gonna happen. Top drivers.